It's fucked up to admit, but I'm like, I gotta see a Travis Scott concert. How has nobody killed this fucking guy? I'll say it, but I need you to bleep this. I'm <laughs> I'll bet a Bitcoin on that. Let's bet a Bitcoin. All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Flagrant 2. Your boy Schultz is back. Uh, I'm here with Akash saying we got Mark Gagna on the motherfucking building. What's the up? truffle. Miles ain't even on camera, but that motherfucker's here. Vala, Shifty in the back. I just want to say right now, this is our second time recording the intro uh, because I didn't go hard in the paint enough. Okay? <laughs> uh, acting yeah. sucks. Yeah. I miss a few podcasts because I was acting. That will never happen again. <laughs> it is not worth it. Okay? I asked to be in this movie. I asked to be in this movie because my comedy hero is in the movie. Eddie Murphy is in the movie. Right. Okay? I know I said on a Patreon episode, and there's a few of you on the Patreon. Here comes Hippocrates. I said acting is the worst fucking thing. You should never do it. I was right. 100%. I was right. Mm -hmm. um, but I started comedy because when I was a fucking child, I listened to Eddie Murphy on a cassette tape with my father. Uh, we were sitting on a bed, and he was doing his, like, you know who would be a funny F word? You know what I mean? You just bleep it. Ralph you know Cramden. Funny? Yeah, yeah. The Ralph. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, right? Uh, and it was the funniest thing in the fucking world. Yeah. That Mr. T was gay. Yeah. You know, clench my butt cheek, snap your dick off. Yeah. Like, and I saw my dad crying laughing and I was like, oh my God, comedy is the shit. I got to be funny. I want my dad to laugh when I say things. And I promise you from that moment on, I valued humor in a different way. Yeah. I get the opportunity to be in a movie with Eddie Murphy. I, I was cool enough. I had a cool enough relationship with Kenya Barris, who's the director. I hit him up and I was like, yo, put me in this movie. And he was like, bet. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, I'm in it and fuck, man. Thank you, Kenya, so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. Kenya seems great. I wish he said no. <laughs> yeah. I wish you rejected me. I yeah. wish you said you're not right for this movie because I'm not. I'm not right for it. <laughs> why are you not? Why aren't you not why are you I'm not, not right good at acting. <laughs> this is I'm gross. not good at acting. This is I'm gross. Not, I'm not good at acting. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Bro, and let me just Can we say, talk about what happened? Can you tell us oh, what I'm happened? I'm going to say everything. I'm okay. going all in. Okay? I'm not invited back to set. Yeah. Uh, listen, it, not only is it Eddie Murphy, right? Eddie Murphy's enough. Yeah. This is the movie that I just asked to be in, and then they said yes. Stupidly. They just said yes. Yeah, right. It's Eddie Murphy. Jonah Hill's the star. Julia Louis Dreyfus. Elaine. Oh, yeah. Elaine yeah. from that show. What was yeah. that show? The best show ever. And uh, ever. oh, I got a great Elaine show. A story. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> Mike Epps, who's a legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike Epps is the fucking man. Yeah. yeah. Dude, Mike Epps turned the whole set around. Yeah. Like he came in, his trailer, he's got music blasting, weed smoke coming out of it. Like it's yeah. a nightclub, his fucking right. trailer. We're all in this dinner scene. I'm sitting next to Elliot Gould. The old guy from Ocean's 11, 12, 13, oh, legendary shit. actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm sitting next to him. He's talking to me about life, like going deep about yeah. life. I'm trying to memorize this thing that I got to say. And he's yeah. just like, you know, the most important thing is being present. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm thinking about 15 minutes yeah. for now, okay? I got to focus. Shit needs to get done so I don't get thrown off this goddamn movie. Mike Epps comes down. He's so loose, so chill, cracking jokes. He's making Eddie laugh. Nobody is, is engaged with Eddie because everybody's so terrified of yeah. Eddie, right? And uh, myself included. And, uh, but Mike Epps is busting balls, making jokes. Like Eddie's in the middle of his fucking monologue that he's taking very seriously. And he's just popping one liners in, like <laughs> cutting off the fucking go. That's it was legend unbelievable. Shit. And being funny about yeah, it. Yeah. Right. Um, at one point when we stopped down this big dinner scene, uh, Epps is sitting like across from Elaine from Julie Louis Dreyfus. And he goes, uh, she goes, he goes, Hey, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, uh, <laughs> so, uh, what's it like working with, uh, Tracy Morgan? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? Because it's obvious who she worked with. No. Oh. Yes! 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 <laughs> he thought she was Tina Fey. Bro, I fucking <laughs> lost it, fam. I lost it. I lost it, bro. I thought he, uh, I thought he was doing some shit you would do where no. I'm not gonna give Seinfeld no credit. No. Oh my god, no. that he was all the money. Dead dog. ass thought it was Tina Fey. Dead ass. He probably thought she wrote the movie. Hundred <laughs> percent. Had no. Fun. It was unbelievable what, how like what she I used to be on a Thirty Rock project. <laughs> she she kind of starts to realize it and then was just like oh, she didn't say nothing. I haven't actually. I don't think I've worked with him in a while or something like that. She yeah. was like very polite and professional about it. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. She's a hoss, bro. She's a beast. Yeah, you can does. see who's a beast. And, and Anybody who's, not, who's and on the greatest show of all time, Seinfeld, all right, has to be a beast. Cut it out. Cut David is that what bothers you oh, about yeah, David Seinfeld? Duke, fucking X Files was there, boy. Is, is what bothers you about Seinfeld is he makes acting look so easy, and then you go in there and stumble through a scene like a fucking retard. Dude, I did stumble through a scene. I, I fucked up a scene with Eddie. I had a scene with Eddie. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And Kenya, I think I've told you this, okay? And first of all, 
Okay, I'll tell you why I was completely shell shocked. I probably told a couple of you this already, but I'm gonna tell the people at home. You guys deserve to 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 understand. Okay, you guys know my pain. Okay? <laughs> I'm so fucking Dove is excited. so anxious. I'm so fucking excited to even see Eddie Murphy. Okay, right, right. I saw his stunt double and I got excited because his stunt <laughs> double looks like him, obviously. But right. like even in the face, down to the goatee, right? Yeah. And I and I was like getting nervous on how to approach the stunt double, and he was just sitting across from me. This is like an hour. And I finally said something to him, and then he like. What's answered. it like looking like Eddie Murphy? <laughs> no, yeah. I thought it was Eddie. Oh, you Mike Epstein. Yes, God damn. bro. <laughs> and, and that's something you cannot fuck up. Right? Yeah, like because that's the one time you're. It's like you do look alike. Yeah, yeah. right. It's Actually, the one time you, yeah. it's okay. It's fine, right. So, I'm 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 in this basically first day. We're all seated across from one another, and yo, know, shout out to Jonah Hill because Jonah Hill is like he he's the star of the movie. And like he's just kicking it with us. We're the guys in his bachelor party, mm -hmm. right? And he's just kicking with us. Like he don't have to. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like he don't have to. And yeah. he was kicking with us and like creating a vibe and trying to make people comfortable. And I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Like that for sure. You don't have to do that. Yeah. You got lines. You got to memorize. You got. You are carrying the movie. You could be in your head. It's doing a lot of shit. stress. Yes. So, but we're all kicking his fun. Keep in mind, it was a walk-in scene. There's no line. But still, he, 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 was, being, he was being very good. It was a walk-in scene. It was, but you got to make choices when you walk. How are you going to walk, right? What's the deal with walk? All right. So, so, so we're all sitting. It's like four of us on this side, four of us on this side. Sam J is in the movie. Love like, Sam J. Young Taco, you know, Travis. The yeah, kid yeah. From Dave, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. funny kid. Yeah. Good kid. He's in the movie. There's like a really great cast. You are right? so Hollywood Yo, now, my dog. boy BG, Damn. Brian Greenberg. <laughs> BG? How to Make in America. How to Make in America. He's great. Jordan <laughs> first. But like, dude, there's people who are really talented far more talented than me in this movie okay <laughs> and that sucks when you're sitting there knowing it yeah and your line's coming up like oh boy i'm about to tank this scene like, <laughs> ruin it for everyone <laughs> when you bomb on stage by yourself it's on you yeah yeah but yeah. when you bring a scene to a screeching halt <laughs> in front of eddie murphy dog like <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it's crazy okay so anyway first time i meet eddie murphy we're sitting down four people on this side four people on this side. sorry three people on this side one empty chair all of a sudden the goat walks in mm. eddie murphy walks oh, in fuck yeah. Sits down. Okay. Now, before he comes in, I'm trying to rile everybody up. I know I'm with like Hollywood folks, so I'm asking them things like, uh, you know, do you uh, recognize Taiwan? Like, I'm just yeah, trying to like, yeah. get everybody uncomfortable because yeah. that's just how I know how to, you know, socialize. Bully. Exactly. Yeah. Actors socialize differently. They socialize through acting. Like, so they'll like make a fake scenario and then like play in it. So they'll be like, uh, oh, yeah, actually, like, uh, I lost my leg in the war. Like, oh, yeah, which war was it? And they'll, they'll do, like, the improv games, but, like, for fun. That's so awful. It, it, it's odd. It, it's super <laughs> peculiar, but it really helps, like, in terms of when you got to do the act. I mean, comics do the same thing, right? But do they? If you hang with comics, but I mean, like, they're just making jokes and, like, tagging up jokes. Yeah, but jokes are real. I don't like those. I don't like that. That's just how comics are. No, no, I don't like that. <laughs> I always feel weird with that. I'm like, what are we doing? Like, I like making fun of somebody or justifying something awful. Yeah. But the thing where we like play the game, we're like, I'm a pilot. And be like, oh, yeah, you are. You're a pilot. It's just weird for me. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do but it. But it helps them be better actors. They're practicing. They're so warming up. And it must work. Okay. Right. I'm trying to do it. I don't know how to do it. Yep. Do you know what I mean? They're st setting up these little scenarios. Be like, yeah. yeah, so in New York, you know, you grew up. Like, what was it like? Like seeing crack addicts all the time. And I'm like... Uh, Taiwan. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what to say, right? You recognize Taiwan or not? Trans people. How do you feel about that, right? So this is what I, I get the group discussing Ch uh, Chappelle's The Closer and asking what their opinions on it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're discussing it. Everybody's discussing. We're having this conversation. It's cool. Everything's interesting. Boom. Everything's fine. All of a sudden, Eddie comes in. Everybody silent. I mean, Voldemort entered the motherfucking room. Mm, I mean, bang. there is not a single fucking That's noise. That's fire. It's a casino. I don't even think the slot machines was working. Like, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. you didn't hear nothing when this yeah. guy walked in. It was unbelievable. And he sits down, and I'm like, okay, I got to break the ice. So I lock in the sentence in my head. Right? I go. I'm going. Hey, Eddie, what do you think about trannies? That's that was what I was gonna say. <laughs> Okay, oh that's what I was going to say. Eddie, what do you think about trains? I'm like, it's going to break the ice. He's going to know we're comedians. He's going to laugh a little bit and then give his opinion on the Chappelle thing because he knows what's going on. Right? Yeah, but yeah. and then a second before I said the sentence is locked in my head, right? He's ready to go. Ready to go. Right. The second before I say, I remember that a few decades ago. Yeah. He picked up a trans prostitute. Yeah. And got the trans prostitute got arrested. 
Mm. Right when he was out for a ride, in West back Hollywood. before it was like acceptable to do that, bro. And he got fucking dragged for it. He got dragged. dragged. For it. Get it? Yeah, yes, I got that. I like okay. the pun intended. All right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and so I don't say that yeah. because that would have obviously ruined. But everything. once you lock in a sentence and then you can't say it, you got nothing left. I haven't said anything since. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't said anything since. I just look at him. I stare at him like a baby. I'm like a newborn baby. I've it's heard like, that's Eddie's effect. I've heard that about Eddie and and Michael Jordan when they sit anywhere, even if there's other famous people. Everything stops and everybody looks at them. You just stop. You look at him. I was listening to him have a conversation. He's not even talking to me. Yeah. Whenever he said something kind of funny, I would laugh. <laughs> I'm not even in the conversation. He's having a <laughs> private conversation. And he's like, yeah, it's just like when the motor turns on and then he starts acting out the motor. And I'm just like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> just sitting across from him, like laughing awkwardly at this. So I'm, I'm like frozen out from that. And that I didn't know what the fuck to do. That was kind of wild experience. And then... um after that, bro, we had one scene and I had one line and it was a little bit, I didn't know how to get it out. I didn't even know what it meant. I didn't even know what the line meant. I didn't know how to get it out. This is on me. I should have found a way to fucking deliver it. I'm saying the line to Eddie. I said the line to him once. He tried to like improv back with me once, but it was so weird. He was just like, wait, improv back. So you improv? No, the line was like, kind of like it, the, the director was really great. He gave me a line in a scene. that I didn't have a line. He's right. been really awesome. Me. Kenya's been awesome. Me. And, uh, and I said the line to your Eddie and I say the line to yeah. you, right? Yeah. And, uh, let's say the line is, well, I'm going to go get some paper. You want to go get some paper? Yeah. Let's get some paper. Like, let's yeah. say that's a line. And he just looks at me. He goes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I asked Jonah. I asked Jonah, right? I'm struggling. I'm fucking feeling hot. I got sweat dripping down my body. There's fucking oh sweats everywhere, dude. No, I'm wheezing. We're in a strip oh club. There's God. there's strippers everywhere. There's girls, tits, ass, just ass, just clapping oh everywhere. My God. Right? It's already an anxious scene. You know what oh, I mean? Oh fuck! I'm like. Well, I'm getting married in a few weeks. You know what I mean? I got oh, surrounded by sluts. Gosh. There's fucking Eddie Murphy right across from me, right? I'm bombing this fucking line. He just said, yeah. And then just stopped and nothing else. And then cut. Can you try it again? You know, they're never like, they don't tell you. Nobody's ever nice to you. Uh, no one's ever like real with you on a set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they always go, great, great. But can you try it? That means horrible. Uh, right? yeah. Great, great. But can you just try like a... You sound like Dove. That's a Dove move right there. Bro, it is. <laughs> Dove is LA, baby. Dove is Hollywood. He, he gets it. He 24 gets it. hours before this, Andrew was in his head. Eddie Murphy was joining the infamous tour. Like, they, we're going on vacation <laughs> with Eddie. Like, this is what he did the movie for. 100%. 24 hours before this. Oh 100%. I was thinking God. he was going to be a pop-in. Guaranteed. Radio City yeah. Music Hall. Eddie Murphy's going to be there. He's going to do stand-up for the first time. There's no chance. There's no chance. There's no... Dude, the way that I delivered this line, I think he was like, comedy's dead. <laughs> I think he felt in that moment... I asked Jonah for help. I asked Jonah Hill for help with the line. I was like, dude, do you have any like advice on this line? I'm, I'm kind of struggling. He goes, he goes, yeah, just don't say it so people turn off the movie immediately. <laughs> He's like, I go, he goes, he goes, could you try to say it in a way where they just don't stop streaming the movie immediately? Like, see the way you're saying it now? Like, the way you're saying it now, they'll just stop the movie and then is nobody will watch said? it. He just, is, he's, dude, he's on a run. He said you're getting bullied so by I'm Jonah getting Hill. Bull, so I was getting bullied by him, bro. I was getting bullied by him. And I don't even know what's going on because it doesn't click at first because I'm like, he's not going to bully me, right? I'll body slam this kid, right? And then, and that he kept on going in. He's like, yeah, yeah. So you just say it so it doesn't suck. Like, you know how you were saying it where it sucks? Try not doing that. Like, it, I mean, like, hammer after hammer. There's sluts everywhere. They're like, stop twerking. They're just seeing me get fucking bullied. Right? Like, oh God, I, yeah. I, I, I honestly didn't know how to talk for like 24 hours after that. I was super nervous, bro. You should have slapped Jonah just to get Sorry. you back. So I, I almost had to. I almost if had you to. go back there, you got to slap him in the mouth. So I had I had a couple things In front of Eddie. Up. I had in front of Eddie. Just to get the respect just back. Just to get the respect back. Comedy's oh, not dead. You're fucking the right. The king God. is here. You're fucking Yo, it's right. Game of Thrones. You yeah, did the walk yeah. of shame, Cersei. Like the bitch that you are, so Cersei. I, I and now you got to get your dick back, dog. dog. Slap that motherfucker in his mouth. Wait, that I was day to. one? That, that was this day happened? one, dude. All right, Sonny, ain't been back since. Ain't no day broken. two. I was broken after day one. Absolute fever. Guy sent us a four minute Patreon question the next day. Yeah, remember? Two takes. <laughs> yeah. I needed two takes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Still needed two takes. Guys. You look at yourself in the mirror. You're like, oh, good, good. Can we try that again? Yeah, Action. I needed another. <laughs> Bro, it is a hard. Act. Hey, this acting shit. <laughs> so it, you're just sitting there. You have no clue if it's good, if it's bad. Like I knew it was bad, but like. You just have no clue. They knew about it was nothing. bad. Remember? Yeah, Eddie let you know. Eddie let you know. No, Jonah let you know. So I did one take with him while he was there, and then uh, the next then take, he had the stunt. He double? just left. 
I didn't have the stunt double. I had a chair. They were just like, look here for eyeline. And I was like, all right. I mean, at least his chair don't look disappointed. <laughs> his, chair, his chair don't look at me like there's no point in him being there. Am I wasting his time? That's a, I mean, whatever. Fuck it. Acting sucks. Is this how you imagine meeting acting your childhood sucks hero? Acting you suck at acting. Dude. Oh, my God. You probably dreamed of meeting your childhood hero a lot, right? Say what? You probably dreamed of meeting your childhood hero dude. a lot, right? Uh, like, yeah. How did you think it was going to go? You just yeah. thought. No, I thought it was going to go different. Don't ever meet your heroes. You know heroes. what I say? Never meet your heroes. Yeah, really? Is don't let them meet you. Don't let them meet you because yeah. they'll yeah. be disappointed. Yeah, because this was a big deal for him. Oh yeah, yeah, this is a big deal for him. I'm sure me. he's heard. Hey, he's probably heard of you. He no. probably heard of you. No. You don't think he heard of Andrew Schultz? I, I it's the Andrew well, Schultz of theandrewschultz.com of Andrew Schultz is flagrant too. That's a fact. Uh, let me tell you something. Hollywood don't even know anything exists outside of Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can believe that. <laughs> I actually. know this. Yeah, no, that makes Hollywood sense. doesn't know anything exists outside yeah. of Hollywood. That is the most important thing in the world. And once you're in that world, you realize why they act this way. Mm-hmm. Like you realize why they have like these kind of like warped opinions. Like if everybody just kiss your ass all day and nobody gave you any pushback, you're just going to start saying anything. Mm-hmm. It seems kind of good or right. Let's help the environment. Yeah. Well, let's do an environmental march. How are we going to get there with our private planes? Yeah. But they won't register that nobody will even go, well, maybe you shouldn't take the private plane because yeah. the emissions from the private yeah, plane. Yeah, nobody says no ever. Foot, put, yeah, whatever that shit is. Carbon footprint? Is that it? <laughs> nobody ever Son, says no. what am I, Eddie Murphy? You can't say the Son. fucking line to me, bro. Come on. <laughs> around I'm nervous around it. Yo, uh, can you also say the story about the other comedian that was on set? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? <laughs> uh, Felipe Esparza. Oh, that, oh yeah, yeah. So Felipe Esparza, if you guys don't know, he's very dude. funny. Oh yeah, he is very funny. Yeah, it's yeah. funny that you said that. Yeah. Uh, after I bombed the fuck out of my line, <laughs> right? And they brought Eddie back in reluctantly. They brought him back in, and keep in mind, all he has to do is look at me and sluts all around him, and he was still like, "Fuck this. <laughs> Not worth I'd rather it. be in my trailer with no sluts than <laughs> watching this guy just oh mumble through his fucking line." Um, oh fuck. Felipe Esparza has one line, right? Yeah. Um, he comes in and he goes, uh, it's fucking, it's great. He comes in and he's, uh, I don't want to, I don't know how much I can give away. He just has a line, right? Can I give away the line? Ah, fuck it, whatever. I'll say his line. And uh, he goes, he comes in, he goes, uh, thank you for the edible arrangements. Right? <laughs> That's, That's really funny. Dude, and with his accent and it's his fucking, really funny, he's dog. awesome, dude. Yeah. He's just fucking so funny. And uh, go check out Felipe, funny dude. Uh, stand-up comic. And he comes in, bro. He comes in, delivers a line. The first time he delivers it, delivers it to Jonah. Eddie's next to Jonah. And they say, <laughs> cut. And Eddie looks at Felipe Esparza. He goes, man, you are one funny motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew almost jumped off a building at that point. Sorry, 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 oh my God. Sorry, 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 sorry. I watched you with my father. <laughs> I mean, listen to you. I listened to you with my father on cassette. Oh, fuck. Oh. Humming, 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 humming. <laughs> dude, it was oh unbelievable. God, I wish that you all were there. I wish you guys were just there supporting me so you could see it happen. Oh, oh. Just watch me crumble, dude. You thought we were going to support you? No, 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 no. no, no. After that, they'd be like, who are you here with? I'm like, Jonah Hill. Yeah, I'm, I'm here with Jonah Hill. I'm here with Felipe, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, fuck, dude. It was, it was a brutal experience, man. It was a brutal experience. Hey, yo, acting is hard. Or, dude. Yeah, dude. Don't put me in your movies. <laughs> Dove is losing his mind. Don't nah, put me in your movies, man. <laughs> I, don't I don't get it. Don't put me in your movies, dude. This is a great experiment. We know I'm going to suck. Focus on. I'm going to suck. <laughs> and then you had to go back to your hotel room alone. Oh, yeah. To go back to my hotel room alone. I bought, I went to, the, I walked up a hill to um, a gas station. Yep. And bought a uh, ice cream uh, cookie sandwich that was dipped in chocolate. Oh, I've done that. Yeah, I've done That's that. That's my biggest bomb ever. I took down a whole pint of ice cream. Okay. I looked at the pint and I was like, no. And I got an ice cream cookie sandwich uh, with vanilla ice cream that was dipped in chocolate. And I um, <laughs> ate it so strategically. Oh, yeah. You know, saving that last dipped chocolate bit. For the end. Yeah, you prepared for it. Uh, kind of like you wish you prepared for your line. I do. I do wish yeah. I prepared for the line. Dude, at one point, I. <laughs> At one point, I asked the script supervisor. This is the person that makes sure you say the line the same way every time. I just, I, I, I couldn't get the line out, right? At this point, Eddie's not even looking at me, right? It's, it's like, it's, and listen, let me tell you something. It's not like he has his phone or anything. He's just purposely not looking at me, right? He's like, I think he thinks I'm making him and nervous or something. he got a flip phone, I'm pretty sure. Some shit, who knows. But, oh my God. And I just go, I go, what's the line? 
And I hear her go, I literally hear her go. She's far away. And I hear her go, <sighs> Wow. <laughs> you almost went full Alec Baldwin, huh? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you were like, you know what? We no. got a hot gun on set. This is how it happened. Son, <laughs> this my, is how it happened. My girl saw Alec Baldwin like an hour ago. On no. my way here, she texted me. She saw an old guy. She was walking like somewhere. Saw an old guy drop something, couldn't pick it up. Picked it up for him. He said, thank you very much. He says, thanks. Doesn't think anything of it. Everybody's turning around staring at him. She looks, it's Alec fucking Baldwin. What did he drop? Uh, sunglasses. Really? Sunglasses. Probably to hide his identity. Yeah. He said <laughs> he seemed like a nice enough guy. She said, thank you very much. And yeah. she didn't think anything. Let fucking me tell you Alec something. Baldwin, dog. These famous people, when they get canceled, become the nicest people. Like, <laughs> I, I love canceled people. Once they're fit, they become so good. They be so, they, they, they're so kind to you. Yeah. I'm telling you, everybody that I've ever met that has been canceled has been the sweetest version of themselves. Mm. It allows you to access the better part of you. Right. If you were a scumbag, if you were a scumbag comedian, if you were a scumbag, and I'm talking about amongst other comedians, if you were a scumbag actor, any of these things, the cancellation humbles you. Uh, it, uh, it's beautiful. You become the best version of you. It's Maybe God you got bringing canceled balance. Because you, it's balance. Yeah. I'm pro uh. cancellation. <laughs> You're pro cancel culture. Yeah. You and Cat Williams done flipped. Yeah, we flipped it. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, no, fuck, fuck the cancel culture. But it does make you a very humble person. Like he's, yeah. I mean, he still won't pick up his glasses. He'll make a minority do it. But he still is. <laughs> he still, he still saw his glasses and he was like, oh, there's a brown person here. They'll, they'll, they'll help me out. I'll say thank you. Yes. very much. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. As opposed to hi, Hilaria. I'm be honest with you. I'm. Shocked. Maybe he thought it was his wife. Yeah. <laughs> it's like gracias. All right, guys. Big announcements. Infamous tour. We added another show. At Radio City Music. Musical. That's right. New York. Y'all saw out the first one in a motherfucking day. We added another show. That's up right now. TheAndrewShows.com. Make sure you get that shit. Another big announcement. Very important. Um, Toronto, we coming. Toronto, we are coming. We are coming. We were supposed to play Massey Hall in Toronto, which is an iconic venue in Toronto. But these fucking pussies at the venue uh, were scared. They were scared. They were scared. They said, oh, we can't have this show. We had all contracts done, everything. Oh, our board, we got some new board directors. We don't want any controversy. We're a little bit nervous. We're a little bit We're a little bit worried he could say some offensive things. Canada, you know what we said? We said, fuck it, we're going to go to a bigger venue. Okay? If you're not going to have us at the small event, we're going to go to an even bigger venue because this is what the people need. Okay? The people don't need you fucking coddling them. Cut that Canadian bullshit out. We're going to the Meridian. Okay, we're going to Meridian Hall, Toronto, Canada, March 5th. We are coming out there, uh, and that's just going to be what it is. And now it's going to be extra flagrant. Now it got to be extra flagrant. I can't believe Massey Hall. You guys should, honestly, you guys should just ban, what is it, cancel Massey Hall or Macy Hall or whatever the fuck you pronounce it. Literally boycott that shit. I can't believe it. I can't believe they would cancel a the show. They're a little bit worried after the whole Chappelle thing. They think that we're just going to go up there and say trans jokes the whole fucking time. Not going to happen, Okay. Well, actually, it might now. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> now it might. <laughs> it might now. But now, nah, we take it to an even bigger venue. Uh, Meridian Hall, Toronto, Canada. That's March 5th. Um, also, uh, we're adding another show, the Infamous Tour. Uh, oh, by the way, we added another show to Portland. We had another one to Seattle. Those two shows are on sale as well. And we're adding a few more dates um, you can come see us in Oxnard. We'll be in Brea and we'll be in San Jose. All those will be available, uh, going on sale this Friday, this Friday, they will be on sale. TheAndrewSchultz.com. Make sure you get those tickets bright and early this Friday, especially you, Toronto, Toronto. Y'all always showed me a lot of love. So we can't wait to get back out there and make that infamous show extra, extra, extra special. Uh, but make sure you get on that. And, and get on it quick. This Friday, 10 a.m. I'm just making sure that. This Friday, 10 a.m. locally. That's when those shows will be going on sale. Make sure you get those tickets quick. Akash, what you got? First of all, thank you so much, Atlanta. That was It was a great time. It was my first time ever headlining a comedy festival. That was dope, being like top billing. We sold out both shows, standing room only. It was so fucking fun. Thank you guys so much. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to be at Fairfield Comedy Club on Saturday. Uh... Next week, or actually the week after Thanksgiving, 
November 26th and 27th, I'm going to be at Zany's in Nashville. December 9th through December 11th, D.C., I'm going to be at the Comedy Loft. Cop your fucking tickets. Next year, January 7th and 8th, I'm going to be at Hyenas in Dallas. January 27th through 29th, I'm going to be at the Comedy Vault in Batavia, Illinois. And February 3rd and 4th, I'm going to be in Richmond, Virginia at the Sandman Comedy Club. Get your tickets at AkashSing.com. Now let's get back to the show. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because uh, I need to make sure you're making some money if you're gambling. If you're gambling, you're going to be doing it with my bookie, and that's it. Okay, mybookie.ag. That's what you're going to do, and you're going to use our promo code FLAGRANT. Not only do you support the show, you support yourself. They're matching your initial deposit bonus up to $1,000. That's a free $1,000. So if you're going to gamble, you might as well get free money to do it, right? No brainer. I mean, more is always better. That's why my bookie instantly doubles all first-time deposits. Now, if you're getting in on the action... It's never been easier because you can bet with all your favorite currencies too, including crypto. And with all that extra scratch, why not get on the biggest matchups of the week at my bookie as we inch closer to the NFL playoffs? There are some pivotal games to be on the lookout for, okay? Including a showdown between divisional rivals when the San Francisco 49ers take on the Los Angeles Rams. Behind MVP candidate Matt Stafford, the Rams are looking to continue rolling as they take on the Fierce 49er defense. The Rams are legit. Bet them to cover the spread. That's what I would say. Don't wait. Head to my bookie today to redeem your to redeem your double deposit bonus. So you can get in the game and start winning now. Use the promo code flagrant to receive your double first deposit bonus instantly. Okay? That's the promo code flagrant. So you can double your funds to double your winnings. Bet anytime, anything, anywhere with my bookie. Now let's get back to the show. <laughs> I'm shocked your girl picked up his glasses. She just saw she got a soft spot for older people it's anytime. Older. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, and he was like struggling. And she was like, oh, poor if it was guy. a it was thirty five year old white guy, no chance, not a fucking chance. <laughs> you pick some, pick it up. If fucking. it was you, yeah, no chance. Pick it no up, chance. pick it up, pick it up for me, dude. I asked my girl for Tylenol last night. She was like, yeah, it's in the uh, kitchen. <laughs> Whoa. She like, described where it was. I go, babe, do we have any Tylenol? Which is get me some fucking Tylenol <laughs> in like nice fiance language, right? It means get me some fucking Tylenol. My head is hurting for making money. Okay? My head hurts for making us all the goddamn money. Okay? And I said, do you know where the Tylenol is? Right? Which means get the fuck up off this big up California King bet. California King. Feet you never can. hang off the end of it. Yo. Son. Ever. Bro, you done did it. California King. California King. Wow. Okay? Where's wow. the Tylenol? And where it's is it? in your cabinet. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> oh, is that where it is? Okay, why don't you inch yourself off the end of this bed, which might take a fucking while, because it's California King, longer, not wider, like your bully. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and get me some goddamn Tylenols, please. Do you know what I mean? You don't even have a fucking prenup yet. Um, you gotta be on good behavior. You don't even have a prenup yeah. yet. Why are you playing games right now? Sandra's so, making a list. All right? yeah. That's how it goes. Sandra, so, you know if there's no prenup, she just gets half. Say what? You know if there's no prenup. That's she's... what I'm saying. You should be on good behavior. <laughs> Until I get the prenup. Is... <laughs> then fuck it up, fuck it up. We you say? No. I don't have the prenup yet. He says it's coming. And it then, might be coming. Okay, okay, yeah. Do you know okay. what I mean? It's like all when right. you know I got the ring, but I haven't proposed. Okay, I got you now. Please believe if I had the ring, but I hadn't proposed, guess who's going to be hop skipping and jumping <laughs> over and get some fucking Tylenol? Might get cold for Christmas. Who knows? Not, hey, she might be. What's in the stocking? What's in the stocking this time? Oh. God damn. So when did, you got the Tylenol? Huh? You got the Tylenol? Yeah. yeah. It's next to some Motrin, some fucking Advil. Yeah, I don't know which one to take. You crawl all the way over there. Yeah. Oh, the I got cat. a headache. From making yeah, all the money. I pass the fuck out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm sitting here, sunk into this real expensive mattress <laughs> that I paid for for making all the money. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm running out of making all the money excuses, man. I be bringing that shit up. All California the King, where's Sorry. your girl from? You did that for her. Yeah. You did that for her. <laughs> Where are you never going back to? California. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's another thing I learned. I can't even mention some shit to my girl no more. What you mean? Like, oh. I can't even think. I can't even be hypothetical. I can't be like, I, I can't say this sentence. I'd be like, it's kind of nice in California. I can't even say that. <laughs> it's kind of nice in California. In her mind means we're moving to California within the year. Yeah. And she mm. just starts looking at property. She's telling, <laughs> oh, I can't wait to be around my mom. Like she just starts saying all these things. Now I got to pull back and I got to mm. go. We're never moving to California. I know. And what sucks 
is I was looking forward to moving to California, but now that there's no Hollywood <laughs> opportunities for you ever again, no, no. it's over. Son, we here in this I'm cold I'm from ass L.A. He said, yo, Dove, stop fucking talking about L.A. around my girl. I'm like, yeah, you my can't. family's from, you but you just can't, can't talk. You can't talk about it. Too much homelessness. That's what it is. LA is full of homeless. PTSD, bro. Yeah. It's a terrible city. We don't, we don't go there. By the way, you're flying there tomorrow. But. I'm going back to do the rest of the movie tomorrow. <laughs> I have one line tomorrow. Can you run the line by us to, to after bro, the podcast? Yeah, you want to practice? Gonna, when I tell you, I'm going to bomb this line, bro. <laughs> when I tell... I'm just going to start speaking Mandarin. You got to play to your strengths, bro. That's, what, that, that's your issue. You got to play to your strengths. Well, I had one thing that was actually fun. You got to be like, yo, let's do some crowd you work. You yeah. got to hit? Was Eddie there? Say what? You got no, no, Everybody had already left. <laughs> but they, uh, were you in your hotel room? You were in the shower. To the mirror. Yeah, yeah, you were in the shower. It was a rehearsal dinner, and I got to like uh, give a speech. Mm. And I wasn't supposed to, but again, Kenya's been looking out for your boy. And uh, he was like, hey, you'll give a speech, and we'll just put the camera on you and just like make up something. <laughs> So it was good. Yeah. Oh, was it anything? I like don't know if they'll ever leave it in, and like I, I, they probably shouldn't, because I'll be canceled forever. Yeah. But I just pretend I'm like my char character storm the Capitol. And, I just, <laughs> and the look at all the faithful faces, like these like super liberal Hollywood people, like like the 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 the, the people who are like really industry were like, whoa, that was edgy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then all like the key grips and the light guys were like. <laughs> yeah, we like that shit, huh? Yeah, boy, that's what I'm talking about some balance. How did I not see you there? Yeah. 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 Recount the votes. <laughs> okay, so that's again, we're done oh, with the tragic fuck. Hollywood story. Oh my God, dude, that was the best story I've ever heard. I'll say this. I think if you're directing a film, if you're writing a film or, or a movie, like if you're involved in every scene. Anything it, you would be good at. What is that? Anything you would be good at. Well, also like brain capacity. Like if you're sitting around set for 12 hours, you'll be at 12 to 14 hours and you'll say five lines on camera. That's rough. That's rough, especially for us because we work every second of every day. Yeah. Right. So that was hard for me. But if I was if I'd written the film where I was directing it or something like that and <laughs> acting in it as well. Yeah. I think I could do that because every scene matters. Mm -hmm. Every scene is important. Mm -hmm. Not just scenes with me in it, but just everyone is going to help push the story. Forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think that I could potentially yeah. do that. Yeah. You know what it does expose? What? One, you're not a good actor. Yeah. Two, uh, when these, these actors are like, oh, you had such a wonderful time filming the movie. No, no you didn't. I'm not a good no, actor. I'm a star, bro. <laughs> Now that I believe you when are they just put the camera on me, though. Yeah, and we put you on a stage with a microphone, yeah, yeah. magic, yeah. and no other people there. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm good at stand up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stand -up. I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think I think I'm good at stand up. Yeah, yeah, so if there was yeah. a movie where I just got to do stand up. Yes, you're good at you. You're very yeah. good at you. Yeah, and your, crowd you, work, your show yeah. will be a curb style show if you do one. Yeah, like soft, soft scripted. Because I think the scripted version of him playing a stand up, he will, can't even do one trash. line. It's a nightmare. Yeah, but you getting to be you. You're Larry David, let buddy. let me be me, dog. I yeah. think Mark said it. You're Larry David, but you know how people watch Curb and you're like, yo, Larry's right. People watch you and you're like, this guy is wrong. <laughs> yeah. Every time. That's what it felt. Yeah. yeah. That's what it felt like. But that's you. That's your show. That is me. That is my show. Don't curb your enthusiasm. <laughs> Don't curb your enthusiasm. There you go. That's curb you. has really become like the new thing where you just go, I want that show. Yes. Like everybody describes their show as it's <clears throat> this version of Curb. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like know? Uber. Like for the longest time, it was like, oh, it's like Uber for weed. Yeah. 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 Everything yeah. was been like Uber and private jets. You know, like, yeah. All right, everything's There's Uber. <laughs> really just one type of comedy show now. Yeah. It's Curb. Yeah. But black. Yes. <laughs> curb, but like white rapper guy. Yeah. Curb, but. Yeah. That's really interesting. Like nobody's trying to do like old school sit. Nobody's like, it's friends, but. Right. Mm. It used to be it's friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dude, Larry uh, David, Larry Legend. Yeah. That's a dream guest here. Two of the greatest sh shows of all time. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy to create the two greatest TV shows ever. Mm. It's not, they're not even, I mean, they're not the greatest TV shows the ever. The greatest Comedy. comedies yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. But don't, don't say greatest TV <laughs> shows ever. It's not even fucking close. Breaking Bad. Yeah. Seinfeld. <laughs> Breaking Bad, no, 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 Curb. No, 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 no. Breaking Bad, Curb, Seinfeld. Where's Game of Thrones from? Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones one is through seven. Uh, one, th yeah, up until the last one. Last one dropped Yo, down. No, there. one through crazy four, one through Game five. Of, Game of Thrones. Yeah, five. that was first mile com talk. Uh, <laughs> first mile contribution. First mile contribution. Uh, you know what's crazy about Game, Game of Thrones? It's funny because you talked over him anyway. Yeah, I didn't I know, know what the fuck yeah, he said. He barely got it. He like leaned over to the mic too. Like he really committed. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Game of Thrones, man. Game of Thrones is a fucking crazy show. It, it's really interesting because like you can be progressive in pockets. Mm-hmm. Like I'm watching it now. Like the girls in the first few seasons are just getting fucking raped. Oh yeah, they don't, there's no consensual sex for the first three seasons. Yes, and then every girl character in the show, yeah, 
just becomes this beast. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Rape is the gateway drug. <laughs> In Game of Thrones, rape is the gateway drug to royalty, to royalty and to greatness. Yeah. That's, I think, what the guys, what is his name? The guy who wrote Game of Thrones? Oh, J.R. Tolkien, Tolkien or whatever. Oh, no, Martin, no, 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 Martin. Martin. Tolkien uh, is the other nerd. Yeah. Lord of yeah. But like, yeah. you'd think a guy like that would have a lot of animosity to women, right? He's like a short, fat troll guy, not very good looking. Mm-hmm. Like, you'd think that like, he would write all these female characters to be like, you know, just obsessed with like money or, yeah. like, uh, you know, they, they just want to r- marry the richest guy, whatever. Right. But he actually writes like the best female characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Victims to victors. Yeah. Yeah. They do that well. It's a good arc. I'm curious about that. But like, most losers hate women. Because yeah. women are that source of rejection for them. Yeah. But he clearly doesn't. I but, mean, he lets him get raped a couple times. But, well, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> he makes sure of it. He yeah. writes it in. And then by the <laughs> end. It's so detailed, too. Yeah, detailed. Every single by the time. end of all of their arcs, you're like, this bitch got to die. This is a problem. You can't give her. You shouldn't give her no power. Yeah. If you think about it, they ascend, ascend, ascend. And then when they get power, you're like, yo, this is, get, get this bitch out of here. Got you. It's too much power. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you want yeah, to be strong yeah, to a point. Yes, yes, that's a good point. Except Sansa, they let Sansa have some power. You're right about that. Right? I forgot about redheads. That. Yeah, yeah, uh, but she went right? through hell. She went through the worst hell. Yeah. Whoa, 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 oh, yeah. whoa, 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 Sansa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you talking about Ramsay Bolton? What Ramsay Bolton did there? Ramsay, and then what's her name before Joffrey? Before? Yeah, Joffrey was a wild little boy. Yeah, that's I a mean, great actor right there. That's he, something I could never do. Yeah. He, he, Apparently, he quit acting. He quit yeah. acting. Yeah, he's done acting. Is that true? Yeah. What a That's pussy. sad, dude. He was good. Yeah, he was really that good. That makes sense, though. If you hate, if your character is the most hated person. Yeah, he can't do anything else. Entertainment now. ever. Like, yeah. you're getting harassed on the street. People probably hate you in real life. Bro, he could be a Marvel villain. Take that same hatred mm. and just be the bad guy and everything. You got enough money. You don't want to get hated forever. How much money did they really make? These motherfuckers yeah. ain't got money yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think they made much. Yeah, I'll be looking at the cars on set. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Pocket watching? Ain't getting it that much. I'm looking at these motherfuckers. You judging me in my little one line. You pull you know up what I'm you pull up in the Porsche Volkswagen? Nah, I ain't got shit. No. Bro, you Ubered there. Nah, they, yo, yo, I be getting disrespected, fam. Yeah. They forgot my car home twice. <laughs> no, twice. I think they might have genuinely forgot it once. The second time they're like, that motherfucker can walk. The they didn't think I deserved it. Got the city bus coming. Yeah. So they, they did send me home in a bus. Yeah. They sent me home in like in a, a transportation vehicle or whatever like that. Now I don't give a fuck. It's more room. But like low key, two nights in a row? Yeah. Your like boy, what your like boy meaningless. A huh? sprinter van kind yeah, of thing? Sprinter. Like your for boy disabled people? This boy is meaningless. Never have I felt more felt more meaningless in this whole thing. <laughs> Bro. Oh yeah, dude! I was looking up Game of Thrones salaries, and it just got stuck behind the Business Insider paywall. Woo! Damn, Woo! I can't even afford that. Good topic <laughs> change. That shit, that shit is a hit piece. Good topic change. Boom, boom. Um, let's talk about it. What y'all think about uh, yeah, Port Portnoy? I think this is further proof Portnoy is going to be president. Whoa, let's go. Whoa. I okay, mean, let's break down the story real quick. Okay, so Dave Portnoy, uh, head of Barstool, there was a 4,000-word piece uh, f- uh, written uh, by somebody at the Business Insider. Right. The Business Insider is essentially like a, like a Patreon, I guess, for uh, it's like a business It's like BuzzFeed articles. for money. Yeah, but you have to, there's nothing wrong with being behind a paywall, patreon.com slash <laughs> Blake I'm not going to hate on that. But essentially they wrote a, a hit piece about him saying that there are women that were coming out and they said that he was having like extremely violent sex with them. There was a couple girls that was mentioned, this, uh, this girl Madison uh, started uh, messaging him over like text and Snapchat. The messages got explicit. Uh, apparently he sent videos of him fucking to her. Uh, she says that she has like a, a rape fantasy. Uh, you know, uh, Portnoy flies her out to his house. This is all alleged. He films her while uh, she's blowing him. Uh, they have sex. She claims it was too rough. Said it was uh, said it was a uh, too much. Uh, yeah. She slept on the couch that night. Portnoy says that it was all consensual. They disagreed about everything after having sex, and that's why she slept on the couch. Yeah. Uh, Madison texts her friend a few a few days later, saying it felt like uh, she was being raped. Yeah. And what Porno basically said with this is this, this is he said, she said. This is yeah. not true. He says it's not true at all. Yeah. She says, I guess it is. And then we got to figure that out. And Which a little is- extra detail for the couch thing is that was after a few weeks. Like he was like, we talked for a few weeks after having sex, couldn't agree on anything. And one of those nights she slept on the couch. It wasn't even like the same night. It was just like we had sex. We have nothing in common, nothing. We're still trying to make it work. It's not happening. And she oh. wanted to have sex that night. 
again and he was like we're not gonna have sex we don't agree on anything and then she slept on the couch i'm pretty oh. sure that's what he said in his statement and then there's allison uh basically uh she said that her friends put her up to messaging portnoy she wanted to bring friends for the first time uh they were to meet and portnoy said it would be weird for them to have friends there if they were going to be having sex uh they don't meet up then they meet up she says they have sex uh, he spat on her uh choked her she felt like she was a uh, preyed on and uh, then took a selfie with Portnoy and her leaving his house. Uh, like So I guess that picture starts circulating. She feels suicidal and depressed. The mother finds out, her mother finds out, uh, and starts going after Port Portnoy. Portnoy releases DMs of him and Allison talking after. Um, you know, he says, miss my dick yet. She goes, ha, 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 of course. She replies. Uh, Allison herself has said that it's uh, not sexual assault. Uh, so mm. it seems like the mom was kind of really stirring these things up to protect her daughter. Maybe she felt like her daughter was would obviously hurt. See, I didn't know Allison had said that because I do know she said she felt suicidal and depressed three days later. And then yeah. the mom said she went to the police. Police say they have no record of I maybe called the police, but police say they have no record of anything of like call. that. Yeah. And Porno basically uh, shared some texts or yeah. like a DMs between him and the girl. OK, so really interesting thing uh, here. Um, obviously, we don't know who's telling the truth um there's really no way for us to know yeah right so we can't really speculate on what the truth is but we can talk about how it's being handled and an interesting thing that we saw from portnoy is he went straight at the business insider yep they tried to uh you know assault his character is that the term assault my character yeah i guess yeah, so, yeah. and uh um, assassinate his character assassinate yeah <laughs> Assault. <laughs> and uh, and they try to assassinate his character. So he immediately goes at the writer. He goes at the CEO of the Business Insider, who mm -hmm. apparently is this guy who uh, got, like, kicked out of Wall Street. Mm. You know, the SEC said that um, he had, like, these securities violations, and he's a real scumbag. Also, there's some people that, like, might have uh, shorted the Penn stock. Penn is this gaming company that uh, – there's mm. a gambling company that he's partnered up with right. with Barstool. It dropped 20% once the story right. came out. Now, also, they didn't meet certain quarterly earnings projections. They thought they would, so that ah, was part okay. of the drop, right? Okay. It wasn't just because of that. But uh, an interesting thing is that he started – he went on the attack, right. right? And if you really want to talk about, like, cancel culture and cancelers, the cancel culture fight is not really from the – talent working within corporations perspective mm -hmm. okay so like when people are, are like dave Chappelle is fighting cancel culture right. it's it's not really dave's fight right because dave gets paid mm -hmm. netflix if they choose to keep the special on right is fighting back against cancel culture but once dave has put out the work there's nothing yeah. right to fight yeah right yeah, like yeah. so Portnoy is an interesting position because he is the corporation. He is Barstool. Yes. He's choosing to fight back. Now, he's also fighting for his brand. He's fighting for his livelihood. Right. Right? Like, of course, he has to fight. But this is a good example of going, I don't care what these brands are saying. I don't care what's going on. I'm going to push back. I'm not going to apologize for this. I'm going to push back, and I'm going to fight for the, the you know, to stop this cancellation, if you will. Right. I'm innocent, and I'm going all out. Right? right. It's on some 50 Cent shit. You know, if you fuck with 50 Cent, he's exposing everything. Yeah. And it seems like that's Portnoy's approach. And what's really interesting about that approach is you switch the conversation from did he rape these girls to is this a hit piece? Right. It used to be did he rape these girls? Now the conversation is this is a hit piece by the yeah. Business Insider. They charge a monthly subscription. If you really cared about these women, you would put this out publicly. Wouldn't you want to stop somebody uh, yeah, who's yeah, out yeah, here assaulting women? That's but no, you're going to charge that's for the information about someone who's assaulting women? They did the same thing with David Dobrik. Like they put a, a article about him in the vlog squad. There was like mm -hmm. alleged uh, sexual assault, like rape charges yeah. against in that crew. Yeah. And they put that shit behind a paywall as well. And it's like, yeah. who do you really help? Huh? Like, who is the predator here? Like, if you want to help these women, wouldn't you put this information out in the world? Right. Yeah. Like, why do you need to pay to know who the alleged rapist yeah. is? Yeah. And also Tim Dillon had a released a screenshot of someone DMing him mm -hmm. said, hey, business in insider asked me to write an article about you. But I stepped away because it became clear it was a hit piece. So there, Tim Dillon is getting people telling him they're trying to get me to write a hit piece about you. And I've also heard that these are like uh, guns for hire, Business Insider. Like it's easy to like get an article written in the Business Insider. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, okay, okay. 
Um, quick question. Do yeah. you know if that hurt David Dobrik's brand a lot? Because it seems to yeah, me like it's it did. Over. It's done. over. I don't so know if it's over, but it did affect it. But it so, hurt that app that he was launching. Like, he right. had an app, apparently, that was Yeah, like it fucked his money up, for and sure. Fucked his money up big. The smartest thing you I can do. I think he's do, demonetized on YouTube now. That's like, fucking going to kill him. It's over. The, the, the smartest thing you can do in these situations is what Portnoy did, which is the direct response. And I don't know if lawyers tell you not to say anything, but I know it helps when you start it by saying, my lawyers are telling me not to say anything, yeah, but yeah. here it goes. And then you get to tell your entire story uninterrupted for uh, 12 minutes, whatever yeah, Portnoy yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you just get all of your side out. They wrote a article that takes six minutes to read. You get to rebut it for 12 minutes. Yeah. And nobody can interrupt it. And I think... That's the best move. Whereas a lot of these actor types or whatever, probably David Dobrik is gonna be like, yeah, I don't know. I just, I'll just keep quiet. Trust yeah. people. This motherfucker's like, nope. Yeah. Let's fire back. And he got the barbs. He got the barstool barbs. Yeah, like, he does. The barstool yeah. motherfuckers rock with Portnoy. Yeah. To the end of days. So yeah. if he goes, hey, cancel Insider or whatever he put, yeah. it was like, oh, you gonna cancel me? No, we're gonna cancel y'all. Yeah. And then that shit starts trending. And what's really interesting is it it basically sets a tone. It's like, if you're going to do it, it was very easy back in the day to just write an article, right? Right. You can write an article about any actor <laughs> or that kind of stuff, and they can't really fight back. Yeah. But if you write an article about Portnoy and your name is on that article, it's not an anonymous article, be ready for smoke. Yeah. That's what he's saying. You even call me a rapist, we are going to make sure you are infamous. This Blodgett guy, the guy who's the CEO of Business Insider, is the laughing stock of Barso right now. And yeah. the whole community is going <laughs> to devour that motherfucker. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, he's the one responsible. And actors are going to be like, well, I'm sorry if she misunderstood. Maybe I misunderstood. And Portnoy was like, nah, fuck you. Nah. Fuck them. Yep. It's hit him up. Tupac type hit shit. Hit him up. Yeah. Fuck, fuck you as a whole crew, whatever it is. Let's mm -hmm. go. All right, guys. We're going to take a break for a second because, look, I know there's a lot to be thankful for, like how Policy Genius can check out if you're paying too much for home and auto insurance. Yes, you should be thankful for that okay it's never a bad time to find ways to bundle your home and auto insurance and save money with policy genius okay are your home and auto policies almost up for renewal well let policy genius look for a lower rate for you this is a no-brainer let them save you money policy genius makes it easy to compare home and auto insurance in one place okay they can even help you find home and auto coverage similar to what you have now but a lower price they've saved customers on average $1,250 per year over what they are paying for home and auto insurance. Think about that. Think about that. They've saved new customers on average of $435 per year on auto insurance, and they've saved new customers on average $350 per year on home insurance. Their team will handle the paperwork to set up your new policy or switch over your current one. Okay, getting started is easy. First, you just head to policygenius.com and answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. Then Policy Genius takes it from there. Okay, they'll compare rates from America's top insurers from Progressive to Allstate to find your lowest quotes. The Policy Genius team can look for ways to save you money, okay, including bundling your home and auto policies. If they find a better rate than what you're paying now, they'll switch you over. For free, their top-notch service has earned Policy Genius thousands of five-star reviews across Trustpilot and Google. So head to policygenius.com to get started right now. That's Policy Genius. When it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Now let's get back to the show. Yeah, dude, that's, mm -hmm. it's a, it was it was a well-handled move, and this is why I have. <laughs> Go, Go ahead. ahead. No, no, I just, I just think it's funny. I love the fact that he's fighting back against the cancel culture shit. That being said, like our boy Francis Ellis was fired from Barstool for a mistake. I, yeah, I had that thought too. Like he literally made a mistake. So like I need to know where that same energy is. Is like yeah. when it comes to the people that are expendable. Yeah. And that's that's what that's when you really know you're fighting back back against cancel culture. It's like if someone expendable is canceled and you just uh, let that shit, yeah. and you tell them like yo you gotta you resign. That's a good point. You're that's a really great about, point. You know cancel culture. So it's like. Yeah. Don't, it's not like a fight against cancel culture. It's a fight to save your life. Yeah. You don't want the scarlet letter. Yep. Mm -hmm. R. Yeah. Rapist, that's done. It's over. Yeah, you have to fight. You got to fight. You don't got a choice. You know, I want to fight back against cancel culture. Nah, fam. And you know what? You want to sell pizzas? <laughs> <laughs> you can't be a rapist. You know what thought I had is, I'm more inclined to believe him because we've already seen that video of what kind of sex he normally has. Yeah. So if that's normal sex for you, I think if you're you got that much to lose, you have to be one thousand percent sure mm. it's all consensual beforehand. Mm. I think. I mean, it's definitely possible to abuse the power, but I also can see you a guy like that being like, I need to get proof that all of this is consensual. Yeah. So I ha I tend to believe somebody who has sex like that normally. 
yeah. is probably going to make sure it's all consensual. And he's got his safe you're, words you're and all that. So risky. It's such aggressive, like violent sex. Yeah. That it's uh, anybody saying, "Oh, it was rape." Look, I have marks on my neck or some shit. You probably do. The guy had a fucking dog collar on you, mm. yanking on him. You know what I mean? Like, so you. Yeah, that's I not would some think, shit you just bring up in a sp- in a spur of a moment. You're saying. Yeah, and like you're yeah. gonna make sure, like, look, I'm doing some shit that could be easily perceived. If I'm not a thousand percent sure she's with it, and then she might not, she might be very not with it, very yeah. not with it. So I got to make sure I get a yes on at every step. Yeah. Like I, at least that's what I thought. Giving him some credit, I also had the thought of a guy who can beat a me too this many times. That's yeah. president, dog. That's president. <laughs> yeah. Trump. I knew Trump. I should have known Trump was gonna win when grabbing by the pussy didn't take him down. Yeah. Or grab her by the pussy. That didn't destroy him. Yeah. It's important way, but he is not. He don't give a fuck. He's untouchable. Now here's the question: Does a guy like that end up having a similar fate to Trump, where it becomes so divisive, and there's so many people that are against you and angry at you just because you are you, that it becomes hard to function as president or even as somebody? It could, but one thing he does differently than Trump: Trump doesn't explain things. Ooh, and, and Portnoy... Portnoy explained yeah, everything. He's a good salesman. So he if you're a, a moderate, salesman. you can yeah. get with that easier than you can with Trump. Yeah. Trump is a little bit tough to get with because he won't explain the shit. He's just like, nah, that's how I feel. Fuck you if you don't agree. Yeah. That's cool. That's going to win a lot of people. Portnoy will say that, but also explain. Yeah. This is how I feel. Here's why I feel this way. Yeah. I mean, the dude might be uncancelable. Drop the M-bomb. Mad accusations. I mean, it's insane. Nothing sticks. Nothing and ever sticks. He was still hustling the pizzas that weekend. He was like, yo, we, and I think he donated 350K. Like they sold 50,000 pizzas because they're doing this, like, um, what is it called? At home pizza or whatever okay. it is. Like the frozen like, pizzas. Frozen pizza or whatever. Yeah. And uh, they sold like 50,000 of them this weekend. I think maybe they were in Walmart for the first time this weekend. Mm-hmm. And they sold 50,000. He's like, I'm donating $350,000 to the Barstool Fund. This is the fund that like helps us. Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Boss move. Yeah. Made all the money on the fucking pizzas. He knows exactly what he's doing. And people are going to go out and support you extra. They're going to buy the pizza just because they don't like the cancelers. Yep. Mm, It's like the Goya beans thing. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yes. Right. So it's like anti-cancel marketing is a very powerful form of marketing. I don't think he's uncancelable. I just think his audience is predominantly like young, white, fraternity college kids. Yes. And all the allegations brought against him, whether it's like the N-word thing, sexual misconduct. Uh, That's a good point. Like if he starts going off on Trump and he's like, yo, fuck Trump or whatever. I think all of a sudden the Penn stock dips a lot more. Oh, wait, go on that. What do you think? Just because like he interviewed Trump and like that got great reviews. Yeah. And like he's uh, like catering to an audience. And I think the audience is predominantly like college age white kids. And the things like, oh, sexual misconduct where there's not a perfect allegation, but there's a story. He said, she said. Yeah. I think they're willing to look past that in large Mm. numbers. If it's like if his whole audience is women, I think this thing comes down on him a lot harder. If his audience is predominantly black and he says the N word, I think that comes down on him a lot harder. So you're saying that his audience is okay with rape and the N word? No. <laughs> I would say uh, college frat white kids. If we're saying that's his audience, they'd probably be using the N word in their rap songs at least. In the rap songs? I doubt they edit it out of the rap songs when no yeah. black people are around. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. think that's a crazy thing to think. Yeah. I just yeah. think probably more likely to look past those types of things or like at least justify them in larger numbers than if his audience was some other demographic. The one yeah. counter argument I have in, uh, to just him being really good at this and like smart and good at navigating. Remember the clip of him in the Rappaport deposition? Where they're trying to, where he's being sued, and he just fucking destroys those lawyers. Yeah, like yeah, this yeah, is a yeah. smart guy. Yeah, yeah he yeah. navigates yeah. all this shit so well. It's honestly what I wanted from Louis when Louis went through his thing. Oh yeah. When Louis went through his thing, I was like, okay, this is a really good comic who's funny as fuck yeah. and smart as fuck. He's like thoughtful. Like yeah, Louis Louis a thoughtful dude. Right. So he's gonna take all this information and he's gonna push it out in a version of comedy. That is going to be so flawless that it's going to get him out of it. Like nobody's going to be critical of him again. They're going to see his side and they're going to be dying laughing. Yeah. And I'm like, this is the first time we have someone canceled who actually has the skill set yeah. to get themselves out of it. Right. Right. Based on their profession. Yeah. Based on what he's been working on for 30 years. Uh-huh. So I was hungry. I'm like ready for Louie to just yeah. deliver this fucking amazing joke that shows beyond a shadow of a doubt how innocent he is, how preposterous it is to cancel it, preposterous it is to cancel him. And how fucking hilarious he is. And I'm like, okay, we're all back on. I'm just waiting for a three-minute bit. Right. And maybe that was delivered in the special that he put behind the paywall. I didn't really... 
I didn't get a chance to yeah. see it. I didn't feel like it had that big effect because it was behind the paywall. Yeah. But like it didn't it didn't happen and it felt like he was maybe more taking like the apology route. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. He Port never Roy, actually said I'm sorry, but wrote an apology. So he almost did the worst of both worlds. Yeah. 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 I think the so words no I'm happy. sorry. Yeah. It's like the people supporting you aren't happy and the the alleged victims yeah. aren't happy. So like you satisfy nobody. And like Portnoy is the second person who actually has the skill set. Yeah. Who's like smart enough, thoughtful enough, knows the internet well enough, like knows how to like create like meme culture, yeah. knows how to create conversations. Like he's shifted the fucking narrative to yeah. the CEO of Business Insider. The CEO of Business Insider might have never even looked at the fucking article. Yeah. Mm. Right? Do you think the CEO reads every article that comes no. out? He has no. no clue. He's just waking up this morning. He's just seeing a clip of him on the fucking soup with Joel McHale roasting his ass, <laughs> right? And he's like, "What is happening to me? Why is every? Why are my kids sending me these pictures? Like, what the fuck is going on?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's good enough to get out of it, and you're actually seeing it happen. And he's gonna be out of it. Oh, I think he's already out. Yeah. I don't think I, I. I think the stock might still be down. I bet the stock lifts up in a few months, and I think him personally is out. You want to talk about an investment strategy? Buying cancel stocks. Yeah, I yeah yeah I had that thought about investing in Penn right now. Oh, dude, I I tried to do it, but I was on California time. Mm. <laughs> I tried to put money in Penn, but I and I was like, oh, okay, the market's still open, but I didn't realize we're three hours back. Right. But like buying cancel stocks is really interesting. Yeah. Because like if it looks like the cancelable offense isn't going to stop the company. Yeah. Right. Like buying Tesla after he smokes weed. Yeah, would have been a great move. Yeah. Right. That is a strategy right there. And it'll bounce back quickly. And then here's another thing you got to think about. When United drug that Asian off the plane. Yeah, we should have bought. We should have bought right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I moment. I hate United so much I can't support the brand It sucks, anyway. dude. It yeah. sucks. Yeah. But that's a moment to buy their stock. Yeah. Because it will bounce. People aren't going to stop flying. They're not. So, you guys, it sucks. I'll stop buying it. I'll stop flying it for a couple of weeks. But eventually, they're going to be $100 cheaper than anybody else. And how does fucking take it? Yeah. Cancel stock. So, then here's the question. Do we cancel people and short the stock? Yes. Mm. Or do we cancel people so that we can buy it cheap and then come back? Both. Right? <laughs> yeah. Do we like try to like bait Elon into something on Twitter? Yes. Maybe yeah. he's yes. drunk or short high enough it, to let respond. It, let it yes. dip. Buy the dip. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I thought about this with art. Like you should kill artists. Like the second. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest. All these artists like die. Do you know what I mean? Like there's like all these moments. All these artists like kill themselves. Like did they? <laughs> or did the guy who bought their fucking painting and wants to make sure that there's no more of those paintings out. Yeah. Like the value of your Picasso is based on him not making any more of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right? Like the it's Bitcoin, right? There's is Jackson only Jackson Pollock dead? Say what? Jackson Pollock dead? I think it's Pollock. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure Are if you he's sure dead it's or not. sure it's not Pollock? I'm almost positive. It could originally be that, but that's what Americans say is Pollock. It's Jackson. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. going to stick with Pollock. But, but just think about it. You buy a piece of art, right? From yeah. this artist that you really like. People are always like, oh, why are all the great artists dead? It's like, because that's how you secure the value. Right. Yeah. You got to have a dead man switch. You're like, Done. If you kill me, I have all these pieces in a vault. They're all getting flooded. How is Given to free. this movie? Like, literally, <laughs> you make an artist popular, kill him. Oh, that's a great Basquiat, movie. How, how did Basquiat die? I'm about to find out. What, a drug overdose? <laughs> Right? Andy Warhol. How'd he die? AIDS or something? <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I don't know. Basquiat died from heroin overdose. Oh, oh there you oh, go. Oh, really? There you go. Oh, what a shame. The artist dies of heroin. Mm. No way, dude. That motherfucker was killed. How Think did about Warhol it. die? Let me find out. How did Warhol die? Hate crime. Spontaneous dicks to butt. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is, it, is it possible he had the SDB? Spontaneous <laughs> dick bustion. Yo, did that happen? How did Warhol die? Overdose? Something? Uh, Overdose on coke. He had like a, a, a heart arrhythmia? Son, no. heart yo, arrhythmia. Yo. Killed. Yo, what's the artist that died of natural causes that popped off? Nobody. Monet, Manet, all these motherfuckers start going crazy. Yeah, he, Van, Van Gogh cut his ear off. It's yeah, like, bro. Nah, fam. He had gallbladder surgery and then died in his sleep from a post-operative irregular heart. Van Gogh's? No, nah, this is Warhol. They killed that motherfucker. Look, think about it like this. You buy a piece of art, right? Uh-huh. The value of that art Art is meaningless. It's not really it's what useless. it looks it's like. It's truly useless. It is bar stool. Okay? Bar stool is valuable because of Portnoy. Mm. But if Portnoy does crazy fucked up shit, then mm-hmm. the value of bar stool will go down. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So if bar stool is at an all time high and that's just a piece of art and you just kill the artist. You kill the career of Portnoy. No. 
You kill the career of Portnoy. Now the art's worth nothing. Oh, Let me you. use a different I example. I got you. Let's say, for example, Picasso is this great artist. Yeah. And then it finds out that he's a fucking child rapist. Right. Who wants to have a painting of a child rapist in their house? Yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. point. No value. You can't cancel him. Kill that motherfucker kill before him. he rapes kids. If the thing has value and kill him before there could be more. The, the what is it? Rothko? Whatever. There's only a certain amount of Rothkos. There's only a certain amount of Wilkies. I only know those because it's in a Jay-Z song. But there's only a certain <laughs> amount of them. Right? Right? Pablo right. Picasso, Rothko, Wilkies. Hey. Graduated from the Kona. <laughs> I didn't even know what them shits were, bro. Exactly. But he only got a certain amount of them. Just think about like crypto. There's only a certain amount. It's now, Bitcoins. the cryptos that you could just keep making more and more, mm -hmm. valueless, right? Mm -hmm. But the ones where there's a finite number, people should be killing artists. Uh, that's a great point. People should fucking murder them. The second you buy an expensive piece of art, you should shoot the artist in his head or take him to a Travis Scott concert. <laughs> <laughs> right. You should do that. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because uh, I want you to be able to get into investing. And I understand it's a daunting task. It was a daunting task for me as well. You don't want to put your money in. It looks like the market's so hot and all of a sudden it cools off. A nice little winter comes and you lost all this scratch because you don't know anything about investing, right? You don't know who is even investing and what they're investing in. You don't know what the company that you're investing with is doing with this data. Well, public.com solves all of that, okay? That's why we fuck with public over here. You can treat public.com not only as an investment portal, but also like a social media app. You can see other people, famous people, rich people that are investing tons of money, see what they're putting their money in so you can also feel safe and a little bit reassured. If Mark Cuban, the billionaire, is putting a little money in a place, maybe you know that you want to take that same risk as him. Now, I'm not saying take that as actual advice, but it's a little bit more comforting knowing that somebody who actually knows what they're doing with money is putting some money in there. All that information is accessible on public.com. Okay. They also have tons of material that you can read, conversations that you can listen to, tons of information to help you get better at investing so you can make some more money. So it's not just one of these places, and I'm not going to talk about the competitors, but basically what happens is they're taking your data and they're selling it to the highest bidder, right? So foul. It's fucked up. It's really fucked up. So Rob basically, the poor and give it to the rich. It's really what they're doing. You think that you're just making your investments on one of these other competitors, but in reality, you know what's happening is they're selling that investment data to the these hedge funds and those hedge funds are making their bets against you or using you. It's really fucked up. And that is not what public is about. They are transparent with their shit and they're not selling your data to the highest bidder at all. Okay. This is what you can do. You can connect with investors from all walks of life and learn new ideas and gain confidence. You can choose from thousands of stocks and ETFs along with 10 popular cryptocurrencies. So you can get in on crypto here as well and you can get exclusive access to a growing community of fellow investors, okay? Payment for order flow. This is the bullshit that these other companies do that public refuses to, okay? It's not what public does. They're not selling your data to the highest bidder, all right? Public.com allows anyone to invest with confidence. Get the big picture with curated themes that let you navigate the market the way that you see the world. Invest in built-in educational features that will help you Invest with built-in educational features that will help you learn as you go and invest safely. They have these these reminders. They're like warnings that basically let you know that a trade might be riskier. So just so you're safe. Hey, if you thought it was absolutely secure, all of a sudden they're going to come and say, listen, hey, this is a riskier trade. We don't know how this is going to go. It's nice, especially if you're getting started. Okay. And you can start right now by investing with as little as $1 and you can get a free slice of stock up to $70 when you join public.com. Okay. You join public.com and you make sure to use our promo code, okay? That's public.com slash flagrant, okay? When you download the app, you visit public.com slash flagrant, and you download the app and then sign up. That's public.com slash flagrant. You're gonna put, remember, as little as $1 in and get a free slice of stock up to $70. Okay, that's what's happening. They have nine popular stocks that you can choose from. Beyond, okay, you of uh, have heard of obviously the Meat, Disney, you might have heard of that company, Peloton, Tesla, Shopify, Zoom, Apple, Amazon. And then what is this last one? Spy ETF, it's an S&P ETF. Good, ah. move. Good move. Well, listen, I wouldn't know what it is, but I'm sure there's plenty of information that is available to you on public.com to teach you all about it. Now, I have to let you know, this is valid for U.S. residents 18 and up, subject to account approval. So see uh, public.com slash disclosures. And remember, this is not investment advice. Go check out public if you want to get into the game. Okay, now let's get back to the show. And we're back. 
Look, I'm not advocating for the murder of artists. It sounds like that's exactly what you're doing. It does sound like it. Yeah. And I probably said you should kill artists. What I'm trying to say is people have been killed for less. Okay. If, less money. Yeah. For way sure. less money. Way less people money. People get killed for Jordans. That's true. That's true. That's true. And you have to think about these pieces. They're priceless. These pieces. Imagine if you just bought Jordans and then killed Jordan. I'll be honest. <laughs> Huh? You should probably light other other artwork on fire. Yeah. The less, A less artwork violent that exists way. from the same artist, the more valuable yours is. Mm. Mm. Right? It's not valuable because it looks nice. Mm -hmm. It's valuable because it's rare and this person is super popular. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's it. The NFT thing with the guy with the apes or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Kill him. Ape, ape board, board ape. Yeah. Kill Club. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How has nobody killed this fucking guy? Uh, yo, you bring up a valid point. Why is he alive? What if you just deleted everybody else's board ape? Yeah, well, you can't delete it. It's minted to the blockchain. Oh, Come on, you yeah. should know that. Yeah, I you really should know this. He also said we should kill Michael Jordan so they stop making Jordans. If you want your Jordans, to you be think Michael Jordan's money? making all the Jordans though? Yeah, dog. What are you talking about? <laughs> you think he's sold them together? They're not gonna keep making Jordans posthumously. Yeah, uh, they're still making Kobe's. Retarded? They're still making Kobe's every day. <laughs> Who's buying retarded? Kobe's right now? When's the last time you saw Kobe's on the street? They were way up after he died. Wait, 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 wait. Do you honestly not <laughs> think that they make? You don't think the price of Jordans go up if Jordan dies? Yeah, I think Chuck Taylor passed away a long Chuck time ago. Taylor's the price alive? of Jordans went up because of a fucking Last Dance documentary. <laughs> you don't think if he gets killed, Akash, the price Akash, will go way Akash, up? Akash, Akash, we just have to go back to the stupid thing you said here. Yeah. <laughs> we just have to acknowledge the stupid thing you said. It is possible that for profit, a mm -hmm. company like Nike might continue producing a sneaker even after the person that sneaker is bestowed to okay. is dead. That might have been stupid, but my point that's is all right. I, that's but all my I point need. is right. That's all I need. But my point was right. What was your point? If, I stopped if Jordan after died, the stock, the price of Jordans would go up. That's 100 percent true. So that's 100 percent so true. So you're a dumbass too, for, Mark. For a We're in this together. You for fuck. a little. Don't bring me this. Idiot. It would go up for, not for decades. This. For decades. I think there'd be initial surge. You're like, oh, I need a. Feel. It's like when someone, uh, like a, a musician. You know what I mean? They die all yeah. of a sudden. Their Pop Smoke's album's number yeah. one forever, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, Because forever. you want to hear the the dead guy. Well, not yeah, forever, yeah. but for a few weeks, yeah. right? You want to hear the dead guy. Um, but yes, I still I still think they would make the sneakers. Yeah, fine, but the price would go up. Sure, the price would go up. But with paintings, with this ape person, the person who makes the ape, I think it's one person, right? Mm -hmm. If you really want your NFT to have value. You kill the artist. You got to kill that guy. What's his what's Bitcoin guy's name? Satoshi. 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 He around? That's if you don't. That's if you don't know him. But he already made the set number. That's already set number. It's already done. He can't make any more. <sighs> what a genius, dog. Genius. Gave away all the power. Yeah. That's why Bitcoin. Is but what if in. we don't know the artist of the NFT? Say again. We might not know the artist of the yeah, NFT. Yeah, you were bringing up Banksy. Banksy yeah. is really good. That's security. That's security. Mm -hmm. Banksy has created his own security. Yeah, you gotta hide. He got to fucking hide, dude. And also now, make your shit on the street, too. Like, can I say something honestly? Please. If you know how bank is, he's all like, you know, I don't want to commodify my art or whatever. I don't want my art to be sold. Blah, 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 blah. I hate this guy yeah. so much. I know. But here's the thing. You do want it to be sold because if you didn't, you would just make replicas, exact replicas of the thing that was sold. And then it would reduce value every mm. single time. Oh, that one of one is not one of seven. It's mm. one of 30. Mm. Go make some more, buddy. Go make some more of the little girl, the stencil with the little girl with the balloon. Go yeah. make some more, dude. It's very easy to make your art worthless. Make more of it. Yeah. Go for it, bud. Yeah. What's can stopping you? Can I tell you something about that girl with the balloon? Yeah. I don't get it. Why do we love it so much? Oh, because it got destroyed. Oh, this motherfucker, dude. Dude, you could order something guy. that's zero of one. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. You could order something that is zero of one. That's better than one of one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess. I just don't understand <laughs> what's so iconic about it. Bro, it's Bitcoin. It's nothing. It's a store of value. I, listen, you act like I understand why Bitcoin is worth a lot. I don't. know you don't understand. You just happen to be right, and it drives me fucking crazy. Son, I be having a gut that's right, yo. <laughs> My gut shit be right, dog. Shells don't even want to say it. Look how stupid you, you saw are. His I just said you're right about Bitcoin. I know, but you saw his waifu? Though. What? You saw his waifu? Son, you see the waifu, what dog? It oh, it's a, it's a Bitcoin waifu, waifu dog. <laughs> Come on. Come on, bro. Act like your boy ain't out here, son. Ugh, it's so bad that I'm rooting against it, even though I'm pot committed. <laughs> Did you sell yours? I won't let no. him. Still haven't sold it. I keep Still talking them out it. of it. Uh, so got it. What's Bitcoin at now? Buddy, more. Oh. It's up. Yeah, sixty-six. You good? Oh, look at so you. So I made money. You made money. You, you can sell win. right now. I win, dude. I mean, you you're gonna get taxed on it right now. 
Oh, yeah. Now we're getting taxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you feel about that? But it's all good, dude. I assume by that point we'll figure out a way around the taxes. Yo, Elon is such a fucking troll, dude. It's Son, so this guy's brilliant, dude. He's like, there's no way for me to pay taxes, so I guess I'll just sell 10% of the stock. Yeah. Knowing that all the people that want him to pay taxes are invested in Tesla and making tons of money. No, it's actually even smarter than that. Okay. Mark, I sent him a link, and he had found another article, but basically he has a $15 billion uh, tax bill due if he doesn't sell this stock. Selling the stock, he's going to have to pay $10 billion in taxes. Not selling because he got uh, preferred stock when he like in 2002 or some shit like that. He got like millions of shares and they're about to expire. Basically to not pay 15 billion in taxes, he's going to pay 10 billion in taxes and make it seem as though he just let Twitter decide what to do. People. Yeah. Yeah. And why does he have to pay 15 billion? Something about the, the, the stock options that he has are about to expire and he's going to have to get taxed on the realized gain of those taxes. And since, so that's like 37%. I'm getting the fine details wrong, but 37% yeah. federal tax and like an 18% state tax and the because the, the stock was issued in California. Yeah. So he's going to get taxed on like $30 billion gain, yeah. 54%. So to not pay that $15 billion, he's like, let me just sell this $10 billion or whatever and then get taxed. And I'm going to make it look like the people convinced me. To do yeah, it on 100%. Twitter. Uh, this is smart. He's so fucking smart, dude. This is smart. Anytime dude. Elon Musk is pretending he's doing something altruistic, he's not. Yeah. He's not. Anytime he's pretending he's letting the people do something, he's not. Does he have any like fucked up kids? Like you have like cokehead kids or anything? Like I'm that? sure, dude. We don't know anything about his kids. There's gotta be. I mean, he's got a lot of kids. There's yeah. gotta be one of them that's in rehab or some shit like yeah, that. Too you know young, I, mean? I think. No, he's got like 17 kids. I Not 17, know. but the guy's got like five or seven. He's or the Antonio like Cromartie of billionaires. He really is. He's got six kids. Six kids. Boom. That's a lot for a billionaire. Yeah. If you're not a fucking Middle Eastern oil tycoon, that's a lot of kids. Six. Son, Jeff Bezos <laughs> did one of the most likable things or maybe the only likable thing that I've ever seen him do outside of get me shit within 24 hours whenever I need it. <laughs> and uh, it, he did you see what happened? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. It was just amazing. So his new wife... Is like cheesed up talking to Leonardo DiCaprio. Checking him out. I mean, it's disrespectful. And yeah. I think Leo's like on an Apple box or something. He's like sitting He's way so higher tall. than him. Yeah, like yeah. He just looks so tiny. And like yeah. his girl's like looking up to him. Yeah. And looks him up and down. If, if her titties are pointed at you, that's a problem. That is yeah. a, problem. Yeah, a problem. Like problem, she was yeah. wild. She was being disrespectful. Yeah. Like she, <laughs> that was super wild. And, um, and, and what's his face? The next day, Jeff Bezos uh, posts a picture, I think, on Twitter. Yeah. And uh, what did it say? Said Leo, uh, we need to have a word or something like that. He basically that. said, Leo, let me show you something. Which yeah. I actually thought was funny wording. Yeah. You know? Wait, what? He literally goes, Yo, Leo, let me show you something. I was like, That's our line. Oh. That was our oh. shit. Oh. Like, yeah. All right. All right, Jeff. And then it's just him on a uh, like on a cliff on a sign that says like caution, steep cliff might fall off, some shit yeah. like that. Yeah. So he yeah, he gonna send the demons Leo. out for Leo, dog. Yeah, and he strategically placed it in front of his upper body, except for his arms put on the things to look mad bro. Looking strong. Looking he looks strong. like he's in way better shape than he is. This guy thought it through. It was a photo op. He went with his Amazon number two and was like, let's figure this shit out. I'm fucking <laughs> getting embarrassed out here in these streets. Now, um, what do you do in that situation where your girl's like head over heels in love with another man? It right depends on who, if it's Leo. I'm probably going to be checking him out with her. Yeah. So I wouldn't even notice. Leo's a tough one because it's like, yeah. Leo, dog. Right. He wasn't even trying. That's the, He wasn't being flirty. He seemed the opposite. He, he seemed just, extremely concerned. You no, know, yeah. that made it worse. That made it more yeah. embarrassing. But she knows like Leo got an age limit. That's true. <laughs> you know, yeah. He thought that was his mom. Yeah. It's like Shorty's probably around like 40 or something like that yeah. or like 50. And like yeah. Leo's not doing that. Yeah. Leo's doing 25. Yeah. yeah. 25 tops. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's no way. So Leo's probably confused about this whole situation. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, why is this girl looking at me like this in front of Jeff Bezos? He's probably trying to talk to Jeff Bezos. Yeah. yeah. If we're going to keep a buck. Probably definitely not talking to these 50 year old women. Yeah, definitely not, dude. The oldest woman he's ever been with is probably Kate Winslet in Titanic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's probably like, this, this is, I really got to act here. Like, Never again, <laughs> yeah. dog. That was it. He made out with Kate Winslet in the back That's of an old Model T. And he's never hooked up with a girl that old ever again. You ever no, talk about how this guy got such a problem with the icebergs melting, but if it wasn't for an iceberg, you wouldn't have a career? Yeah, that's a good point. Ooh. Am I going to talk about that? It's a hot ass take. Yeah. That's Whoa. why he's concerned about them melting. He's like, yo, we got to bring these motherfuckers back. Yo. Titanic 2. Yo. <laughs> yo, you're right. You're right. That's a great fucking point. Or maybe he doesn't want it to melt so there won't be a replacement. Oh. Like he doesn't want someone else oh. to take his spot. He's trying to kill there the you go. Oh, yeah. He's killing the artist. You gotta kill the artist. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 
Mm. But yeah, I think this kind of just confirms like basically do you want wealth or fame? Like that old debate. Ooh. Like if you could get one or the other, like yeah. fame, I'm assuming plus like charm, personality, or just pure wealth. Yeah. You might want fame, dog. But Leo don't you, got don't wealth. Do you think too. you want what you don't have? Because Ooh. I don't think that Leo's more famous than Jeff Bezos. I mean, as far as like, if you see appeal, them both walking on the street, yeah. I think more people recognize Leo. I don't yeah. think people know what Bezos looks like as much as they use his shit every day. Man, I I think it's I think it's tricky though. Okay. Like, don't you think it's close? Probably closer than I'm thinking. That because my initial thought is a hundred people are gonna recognize Leo out of a hundred, yeah. and thirty are gonna recognize. But if I see Leo, I like I'm him. I'm probably yeah. being. Yeah. I'm excited to see Leo. But if she's I see been Jeff, around I'm those like, actors, like her ex husband is Patrick Whitesell, who like r runs WME, like has Ben Affleck as a client, Christian Bale. She's been around these people. Yeah, but she's this Leo like, dog, this all right, different. I'm in the room. I'm glowed up. Let me just have my, Leo. This let's Leo the Lothario. Leo look to me in a certain Bruh, way. This Leo the Lothario dog. Yeah. This is different. It's not Ben Affleck. Mm. Certain Ben Affleck. So, mm. you think she was just trying to be charming? You think she was just trying to be flirty and fun? Bitch, you too old, bro. <laughs> she wants to flex if like she could get some attention. For sure. How old is she? I'm gonna look it up. Because here's the thing, he, Leo's fifty. Yeah, but So it's not like like it's one thing when you're playing mom. She's fifty one. She's fifty one and Leo's what, fifty? So it's one thing when you're playing mom and you're flirting with a younger man. He's forty six. He's, He's 46. 46. Yeah. Okay. So if you're playing mom and flirting with a younger man, that's kind of fun. Yeah. Like if Meryl Streep comes up to me and she starts flirting with me and saying some wild shit, mm. it's adorable. She could say the wildest shit in the entire world yeah. to me. Just like an old man like can like can say that to a girl in her like 30s or 40s and it's kind of like charming. Like he can be like old and creepy, but it's kind of like funny. Yeah. Less, less charming than when a woman does. Fair, fair enough. Way less charming. But when a woman does I think does you're it, thinking of when fine. your dad does it and he's not creepy at all. He says pretty mild things. But yeah, like a. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, like, literally, like the grandpa in the movie who's like oh, saying okay. kind of yeah, shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that know, is whatever. kind of funny. It is kind of fun. Yeah, like yeah. a grandpa at a diner and saying things yeah. to the waitress and the waitress is like, oh, Harold, shut up. Yeah. Right? Like, because they know it's so ridiculous and it could never right. happen. Right. You know? Or like the nerd character hitting on the hot chick. He can say whatever because it's absurd. It's never going to happen. Right. The insulting thing is she might be operating with him as if it could never happen it's ridiculous but they're within the fuck range yeah, yeah five years five years i mean most people are in leo's fuck range yeah, that's true. <laughs> <Are they? laughs> that, oh no most people should be yeah yeah yeah, yeah most that, people yeah, should, should be, be in leo's fuck <laughs> range right but like that's an interesting perspective like i don't this is funny she is probably looking at the situation like i'm 51 but i'm bad i got the richest man on the planet mm -hmm. to leave wifey mm -hmm. yeah like I got the richest man on the planet to give away half his shit for this pussy. Yeah. yeah. Got with me while he was with her. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the most fire pussy ever. Yeah. He gave up half of the wealth of the richest person on the planet. Never in history has that ever happened. Yeah. Mm. That's how fire the pussy is, right? So she's probably looking at Leo like, if I want it, I'll get it. Yeah, yeah. And Leo's like looking at her like, Grandma, baby, <laughs> let me talk to Bezos for a second. What the fuck is going on? Like, they don't understand what's happening. Leo's trying to steal Jeff from her. Yeah. yeah. Let me, let Leo me would rather be a Jeff. They both want to solve the fucking climate crisis or whatever yeah, the hell yeah. is going on. Yeah. Even though they're both contributing to it. Absolutely. 100%. Dude. Nobody destroying the environment more than Bezos. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? Son, it's not you... recyclable on boxes that come to your house. Well, I think they are. They are. <laughs> you can't recycle boxes. Yeah, you can. To, Keep on recycling boxes. It's, it's like, legit the number one the shit to recycle is cardboard. Y'all really never had anything that was recycled out of boxes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What you have is recycled, recycled cardboard. Out of boxes. A, lot, a lot of boxes yeah, are recycled. A lot more boxes. boxes yeah. They make boxes out of boxes. That's how, that's almost how they you make Can't make boxes out of boxes. What do you think they make boxes out of? Tree. <laughs> they make it out of tree, bro. Why do you think there's no Amazon? Because of Amazon, dog. <laughs> Yo, I mean, come on, guys. This is basic information. This is basic knowledge. You can't make boxes out of recycled boxes. So you already used it. name a company after the shit he'd taken out completely. He knew from the jump. It's a new, it's a new Amazon. Get, the Amazon's here now. Yeah, yeah you got to kill the first Amazon. Control the supply. 100%. Smart. 100%, man. This guy's serious. Have y'all Googled it yet? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that you've used. That's you made cannot make about. boxes out of recycled boxes. Yeah, it's confirmed. Uh, most yep. boxes in the United States, or no, 65% of boxes are made from partially recycled boxes at least. Oh, partially. That's 61% as partial. Are partially recycled boxes. And I think at least one is probably fully recycled. Not. <laughs> not but the box is recyclable even if it's partially recycled. Nope. 
Once the, it's open and put together, it can't be used as a box anymore. The sixth most recycled item ever is corrugated cardboard. Is yeah. what? Corrugated cardboard by boxes. Yeah. And newspaper is made of recycled boxes. And uh, Jeff Bezos' wife is a recycled box. It's <laughs> 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 <That's> interesting, actually. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay, maybe oh, you can. Man. Fuck him. Uh, <laughs> but shout out to Jeff Bezos. You out here, King. Son. You out here. Um, all right, should we talk about Astro World? All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because uh, I need to tell you about Watch Gang. Okay? They've given over 500 Rolexes away. It is the number one watch club in the world, okay? They give a tag away every Tuesday, a Rolex every Friday, and a Psycho every Saturday. They like the alliteration, kind of. It's the world's number one watch club with over 1 million members, and you're getting up to 70% off retail when you're joining this club, okay? They have a plan for every price point, by the way. And you get to keep every watch. All watches are guaranteed to be worth more than the price of the mem of the membership. Okay, Watch Gang partners with small European boutique brands, as well as the Seikos of the world, Swiss and Japanese movements in all watches. So what you can do is you can get a watch whenever, monthly, quarterly, or whenever the hell you want, and you get to keep every watch. All the watches are up to 70% off the retail value. Watch Gang removes the middleman and passes the savings to you. And I just want to let you guys know, if you guys are interested in watches right now with the promo code flagrant, you're getting 20% off all plans. You choose your plan, choose the plan that fits you best. You go to watchgang.com slash flagrant. Okay. And use the promo code flagrant. You're getting 20% off all plans. Choose the plan that fits you best. Get your wrists nice and shiny. Put a little sex in your life at watchgang.com slash flagrant. Now let's get back to the show. All right, should we talk about Astro World? Yeah. yeah. Sure Tragic, man. Eight people dead. Yeah. Uh, a bunch more in the hospital, even more than that. Mm. bunch more in the hospital. Mm. Have you guys heard this thing about the needle? Yes. Yeah. This oh, is what's yeah. really interesting to me. I'm curious the if the people died from the trampling, from uh, some sort of asphyxiation, or from fentanyl or whatever the fuck was in that needle apparently there was a guy walking around just jabbing people with the needle i don't know if that's confirmed yet is it the yeah. police say they're still investigating it but i've read the the stories like the really detailed ones of how people were getting crushed in the stampede and you, you just know if there were some people that were injured from that needle definitely a lot of people were killed within that stampede they were mm. crushed i read some accounts that basically once travis scott got on stage everybody tried to rush to the front and some girl was saying like she lined up dumb early, like an hour and a half before the concert even started to be close. And then when Travis came on stage, it was like crazy pan, like it was so tight. Literally, I think she said, if you jumped, you just stayed in the air. Yeah. It was that yeah. tight. You felt it on your ribs. People are shoving in. She passed out. And then luckily they were like finding people who were passed out and then crowd surfing them out of the way. <laughs> she helped one person. Then she passed out and then somebody helped her. And then the eight who died, it seemed like they just got trampled. Yeah. Like the the needle thing, it would be fucking crazy if it's true. Right now, it's not confirmed. The it Houston seems PD like did confirm that one security guard allegedly he he said that the security guard claims that he got a needle in the neck and then had to be resuscitated with Narcan. Yeah. Now, some people are suggesting that the NYPD is putting the needle story out and like trying to push the needle story because it absolves them. HPD the or, or the Houston PD. Yeah, Houston PD. I mean. Is, is putting out this story and oh, like pushing the needle story because they're like, dude, there's a crazy guy with a needle. It's yeah. not because there was poor crowd controls, not because of anything else. It was wow. a wild attacker. And also multiple things can be true. Yikes. Yeah, it is kind of crazy, but there is an interesting conversation, which is like responsibility for mob tactics. Mm -hmm. Here, Yeah, okay, go ahead because I have a... So... And again, I don't hold I don't hold uh, Travis responsible in the same way that I don't hold like uh, Trump responsible for like inciting violence or inciting these things. Right. Like, yeah. You can say something, but if somebody actually does it, they should be personally accountable for that, especially if they're an adult. Right. Yeah. Uh, that being said, people are going to look into Travis's marketing and they're going to show that he makes sure, you know, every single time that a mob chases him. And mm. he is the type of person that 
uh, mobs create around him. Mm-hmm. And he's the type of person that people will charge the gate. And he's the type. He is that famous. He's that excited. 2015, he pled uh, guilty to, I think, reckless endangerment, endangerment because he told the crowd to hop over the barricades. Uh, I think 2017 in Manhattan, a guy sued him because he said he got shoved off a third floor balcony and then dragged on stage. Wow. So this is a thing that he's already it's had part of the issues with. Yeah. yeah. So when that happens and you don't and it do looks it. super lit, dog. It looks Son, super in lit. the Astro World promo for this year. They use footage from previous concerts that show people breaking down gates and jumping over fences. And they're like, yo, this is the craziest thing ever. Hundreds of kids just running. He says that he wants his shows to be like a WWE show. And- yeah. He's promoting that moshing, and he's saying that's the release. But and apparently, he tweeted earlier that day encouraging gate crashing. Well, and he then, said we want the wild ones in, or some shit. Yeah, like we're that. sneaking the wild ones in. We're still sneaking people in. Blah blah. blah. And yeah. apparently, the event was oversold. Yeah. So it's so, like there's a bunch of people probably on the hook. Yeah, we got to figure out what the issue was. If the issue was just simply overcrowding, then maybe it could be those people that came in through mm-hmm. the crash gate. Yeah. And if they came in through the crash gate because they felt like Travis was telling them to do that. Is he partially responsible? It's a bunch of issues. Right. Yeah. That's at least what they're going to say when this goes to a lawsuit, right? Yeah. The lawsuits are going to say, listen, he told motherfuckers to crash this shit. And the people that crashed it caused the overcrowding, which caused the people to be squeezed and trampled and fucked up. And Mm -hmm. if it was only the amount of people that were there, right, if they didn't oversell it, if they oversold it, then they also, whoever oversold it is on the hook as well. It's just a really interesting situation. It's like, how much can you hype the crowd? How much can you reward it? Like every time Travis is being chased, I don't even think he walks. The only time I see him is he's being chased. He's mm-hmm. at McDonald's, people going crazy and they're they're mobbing it, right? Yeah. He's in Fashion Week, people going crazy, they're mobbing it. Like almost to the point where I'm like, is he paying mm-hmm. to like start this kind of thing? Is yeah, he paying yeah. a few select people to like chase him when he goes somewhere because it makes it look super hypey? Yeah, right. It does look hypey. You look like you're the man. People are chasing you through the streets. Yeah, that's a superhero. You can also right just there. put yourself in a position that that happens. Like, if you're not paying everyone to chase you, like, you can go through the front entrance of the concert where everyone that's there to see you sees you. Yeah. And they can walk up to you. And all of a sudden, that's going to create panic. Like, he could go through the back door. Yeah. There's other entrances. There's better security details. There's disguises. Like, yeah. but he's intentionally drawing attention to get people to. It is also, touch I've been to a Travis Scott small live performance. He did Wild and Out one year. And I went to go hang out. It was like 2016. I wasn't on it, but I was just saying hi to everybody. And that motherfucker had the whole place shaking like I've never seen any live performance ever. Like, he's actually incredible live, and he creates his energy. I can't even explain it. I walked out toward the end of the performance, but you could literally feel the whole venue shaking. It was yeah. crazy. It was fucking wild. <laughs> it was the most awkward story I ever heard, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that's Fire it. events, so live, going crazy. I got to bed early, but it was that's crazy. That's exactly though. what I did. That's what I did. It <laughs> Schultz's bachelor party, lit as fuck. About 2 a.m. You guys, you guys good? I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go to sleep. Try to get eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Our guys would go to sleep every night yeah. early. Makes me feel better you did that for Travis Scott, too. Right. I'll be doing that. Oh, that's me. <laughs> they that's also said that like this event had, it's a festival, right? It, it was 50,000 people. But normally when you're at a festival, you're at Coachella. There's a main stage. And then all the people that want house music are in like far off in the Sahara tent. So that whole crowd is distributed across the field. Anyone going to Astro World Festival? The entire show will be yeah. there for Travis. Yeah. And so that yeah. just... What Dub is saying is there's multiple bands playing at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And usually they're bands that don't have any kind of crossover right. with the listenership, right? But at Astroworld, there's one person you want to see. But at the same time, like, they should be ready for that. Like, yeah. when Jay-Z comes on at, I don't know if he's ever played Coachella, like, everybody's going to see Jay-Z. Rock the bells. You well, want to Coachella, see Jay-Z. I mean, this is going to have a, an effect on all of it because Coachella has been the same exact fields in in palm springs or in coachella area and the audience uh capacity just keeps on growing they've expanded a little bit but like triple what it was when when we were going like 15 years ago and you feel it like people are lined up two hours before there's still room but you're like no no, you're that's gonna change big time what do you think you're just Just not gonna have these big concerts or the capacity is gonna be capacity has to has to be reduced yeah yeah Hey, what do you, you think? Thinking, do you think Travis is the greatest artist of all time? Yes. No, what, what I was going to say is I think there's like I've seen examples. So I've been like reading up on like Reddit stuff and they're like, yo, I was at a concert that was in uh, Glass, I was in the UK, let's say. And it was a hundred. Th- or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's a hundred thousand people, but they had rows that were forcefully like layered in and security would kick people out that would step the road. That's row, how you're like, supposed to do it. Yeah, yeah. There was like, there are people that apparently do this correctly with larger crowds. I'm not I, like, I just Post, imagine. Post COVID people are wild. Uh, yeah, I just imagine that those people maybe are going to elevate like to a, a bigger career. You know what I mean? Like those people that handle this well. 
I also think, yeah, person. Travis doesn't seem like he wants it. He wants to fucking, I want yeah. you guys to swarm. Yeah. yeah. And you could tell, and he does like, make for a crazy energy. The fervor in the audience when, like, they're bringing the ambulance through and kids are jumping on the ambulance, like, twerking and, like, stomping on it and, like, trying to break shit. Yeah. So, and apparently he saw the ambulance, stopped the music for, like, uh, several seconds is what I heard. And then he was like, what's going on? There's an ambulance. The music stops. And then he goes, if, if you're doing all right, put your middle finger up. And then he went back into 30 more minutes. Oh, oh. Yeah, so... I, I don't necessarily blame him, but it ain't a good look. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, the event went on 30 minutes after it was already declared like a mass casualty. So it continued for 30 minutes after there was reports. And apparently, people were telling him, like, yo, there's people we might need to stop. And allegedly, I don't know if this is true, he said, nah, fuck all that. Let's keep going. Oh, that would be a He's fun. on a massive platform, and he sees, like, multiple people getting resuscitated. He keeps on doing the robot. Like, you see his statement, yo. Here's a, no, I didn't see his statement. Keep on real, doing the robot, <laughs> bro. He was he was in the robot. And he was also killing it too. I was like, damn, I get it. Murder that shit. <laughs> There's a, he found a nice pocket. You can't. You gotta let him finish. Yeah, that's that's tricky, man. That's tricky because you are at a concert, and people are taking drugs and they're gonna pass out. Yeah. So I'm sure it's not the first time a massive entertainer has seen someone pass out. That's true. In the audience. And there's 50,000 people there. Normalized. Yeah. Especially when you go to these big fucking concerts. Dude. Especially his concert. Yeah. People are smoking weed. They're dehydrated. They're doing fucking ecstasy. They're doing Jumping, all like, like screaming for two yeah. hours. Like seeing people pass out is nothing. Death is crazy. But how do you know the difference? That's what I'm saying. He yeah. probably doesn't know the dis- difference. He's seen it a million times and that's not really phasing him that much. Maybe the ambulance did a little bit, mm-hmm. but... Bro, like seeing somebody pass out, like I'm just thinking like at Burning Man or even like at a comp, uh, at a at a, a festival or something like that, that wouldn't be that shocking to me. Yeah. It just wouldn't, I don't know. I wouldn't. Yeah, I, that's a good it, point. Bro. I'd expect it. That's a good point, but that's going to be tough to explain if you get sued, which he's already starting to get sued. Oh, in retrospect, you look awful. Yeah. You look so cold, bro. Like, yeah. You knew these motherfuckers. You knew these motherfuckers were dead. You kept on singing. You kept saying, "Put your mother middle fingers yeah. up." And he can't exactly say, "Oh yeah, I'm used to people just passing out yeah. and right. looking like they're dead at my yeah, concert." They do all kinds of drugs at my concert. Yeah, you can't say that. But how does he know that they're dead? He has no clue. He so no clue. You, that also falls on his management. That's like, yo, are you getting feed and intel from like the medical team? Oh, fam. Once they know that somebody's dead, someone got to go on that stage and Call be it. like, "Hey, it's a wrap." Yeah. Yeah. Like that's one person medical teams that have flare guns. Honestly, God, they should be inside the crowd. That's a good, no, they really yeah. should. And if flare you see guns. the flare go up, be like, yo, that's it. Yeah. Automatic 30 minutes stop. But I'll tell you what's probably going to happen is motherfuckers are going to bring flare guns to just fucking party <laughs> and just oh, be like, shit. this shit is fire. Yeah. <laughs> yo, that's crazy about that needle though. Yeah. I don't even like that. That's a story because it's going to give motherfuckers ideas. Like, what, what, what if like, he's just invec- injecting them with the vaccine? Yeah, it could be cool. What if he's just a big science guy? Imagine. I'm just saying, like, what if you're one of these crazy serial killers or you're one of these crazy motherfuckers, right? Like, do you want to give everybody AIDS? You want to give yeah. everybody, you know, some sort of disease? You got some Ebola, you know, you want to give somebody that? Like, you just go around jabbing motherfuckers and you're so close, they won't even feel it. Like, honestly, in a concert that's that tight, you can just walk by people, poke, and they'll be like, oh, what was that? They'll think it's a bug or if something. If that, bro, you're probably drunk. Bro, like, you don't even need yeah. to do that. You can literally offer people free fucking ecstasy laced with fentanyl. Like, Oh shit! Yeah, true. It's much yeah. easier than yeah. poking. Yeah, because the, the poking people, you gotta have mad different needles. Throw one out. Throw another one out. Like, yeah, you, you can also be on the hook for that. People could be like, "Oh yeah, I saw the guy that came up to my friend and gave him some shit. He looked like this." Yeah, you the do poke this complete is in and out. Secret. Yeah. Yo, you guys ever poked before? I fucking will see the person. Yeah, but when you're you. this shit faced, you know what I mean? It's yeah. a little crazy. I also, on, to Travis's defense, I don't know if he's drunk. Like a lot of times performers are on stage like they're faded like they yeah. might not be like f- fully able to make coherent decisions especially on that scale. Yeah, but again, I don't think any of that flies in court. That might maybe the court of public opinion maybe, but other people are going to be like, "Yeah, but it's still your responsibility." Your well, show. no, I think legally he might be off the hook. Well, I think yeah. public opinion is going to be harder on him than the legal pressure. Really? Yeah. I think that they're going to treat him like Alec Baldwin, man. Like I think they're going to be like, "Oh, man, he's the victim in this." Well, I honestly think that statement hurt him. Cause oh, I was, what was his name? Yeah, his have apology you seen his statement? Great. His apology was, he just literally, he just saying, he just rubbing his forehead the entire time weirdly. He's just doing this and it just looks weird visually. But also though, the shit he's saying is almost more like, hey guys, don't be mad at me. It doesn't re, it's not super awkward, but it's like, yeah, I just want you guys to know my fans mean the world to me and all this stuff. And I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to uh, set up a fund and 
Yeah, I think y'all, I didn't hear said it before. And yeah. I already said, like, I'm going to give you all information as soon as I get it. And it's like, bro, we don't care about the information. I, mean, I want take care of the people. Well, he said he was like, I'm going to set up a fund. Try to, we're figuring out the families. Okay. We're trying to help That's the families you. in this tough time, blah, blah. But he also put a filter on it. Yeah. He don't put a filter on your apology, bro. It was black no. and white. It was weird. <laughs> yeah. white. Don't make it black and white, bro. Come on. Yeah, I don't know better. Get super emotional. It just didn't. Feel yeah, like he it almost looked thing. like he was trying to cry, but he He's couldn't. Trying. That's the forehead scratch. Yeah, it didn't feel super genuine. Music, a little Sarah McLachlan. He no, should have. Sarah McLachlan would have made a little help, bro. Should have listened to that before. Yeah, it's <laughs> a dope name for a female rapper. Yeah, Sarah oh, McLachlan. Yo, McLachlan. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Damn. Okay, so you think that he has to pay any money at all or not? No, because I think you would have like insurance. The yeah. I, I don't think it's going to be him personally. It's going to be like the event, like vendors, like probably like the medical team that was hired because apparently a bunch of them were incompetent. Right. It's going to fall on like the production and whoever produced the event. Yeah. Probably like his management. No, I can't I imagine think it if, like, comes out of his pocket. Prove that the promote, there's insurance, but then if he was at fault, if they could say that he caused this, oh, then they'll turn on him. The insurance is going to do everything in their power to convince the courts or whoever it is that Travis Scott made these people rush. Yeah, and he encouraged yeah. it, and he said this, and they from this, the most and this from tweet. The promoter, I think. Mm. Yeah, so if they can prove that he encouraged the violence, then yeah, it'll be on him. Fuck. Yeah. And then how does that change concerts? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Do if, we stop the mosh pit? Yeah, kind of. I don't know if it's going to change it that much, though. Son, people die every year of Black Friday. It. That's true. That's yeah, true. Man. But I'm just saying, like, if you know that you're on the hook for it, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like with Black Friday, I don't think that the company itself is on the hook. But if, if what was it called? Was it Best Buy? If Best Buy was on the hook every time someone died at Black Friday, please believe that they would have some different rules. Right. Mm. And once these artists got to start paying, or these promoters have to start paying, like if the promoter of this event has to pay, please believe anybody else's event that they're promoting is going to have very different rules, so they can avoid another payment. I think right? if you're that type of artist, a fire PR move is to say, "Yo, you got to sign a waiver." Just to come to the concert. Ooh. Oh, shit. That if you're if you're injured in a moshing accident, blah blah blah, like Ooh. it's on you. And for PR wise, that's crazy. That's like I forget what scary movie did that, but they were like, you got to sign. Like you have to consent to how oh, scary yeah, it is. Yeah, people yeah, are dying yeah, in the yeah, theater yeah, 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 from yeah. fear. Like amazing marketing. Yeah. What the fuck movie was that? The um, the something project where they're in the forest. Blair Witch. Blair Witch. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Blair Witch. I think we all thought might be real. That was there's like there's medical about. staff yeah. at the theater because people are passing out like yeah. that kind of thing. They're having seizures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Like that kind of marketing was like, yo, you want to go to a Travis Scott concert? You gotta sign away and Your say, life. yeah, if some shit happens, like it's on you. So haunted houses do down. that sometimes. Like say some again? some haunted houses do that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah they yeah. do. Like I gotta go to that fucking haunted house. Yeah. It's killing people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Travis Scott sales might skyrocket. To be honest with you. Yeah. Jeez. I'm curious if it affects like sneakers and shit like that. Because oh. he's also like beat this before. If we're talking about like case precedents, like he pled guilty to disorderly conduct and yeah. like 2015 uh, inciting a riot. Yeah, you got discharged from that. Like, but this time eight people died and it's a national fiasco. Like we're all talking about. This. Yeah, yeah. You know, and this even is in, different in his documentary, the one on Netflix, "Look, Mario Can Fly." He has the same thing happen where like it shows him encouraging the mob and like he runs off stage and he's like, "Whoa, that was crazy!" Like they ban him from like that venue or something like that. And it was used in the promotion. It's like all part of the brand. I do Crowd think surf. it's all romantic until people die. Yeah. Up until the point people die, that shit is lit as fuck. And it yeah. might still be lit because more people died. And it might be that much bigger. But I think it gets a lot more real when you're like, oh, eight people died at this concert. Yeah, but you're also dealing with a fan base of 15 to 18-year-olds. Yeah. They're like, I won't die. Not going to be me. Yeah. I'm yeah, built different. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. They think they're immortal. But wow, I didn't realize that like this could actually help him. Yeah, could the concert is so lit? He is so lit that people are willing to die to get close. Son, he's to the greatest before. live artist ever. There's not even a debate anymore. To uh, me. Yeah, well, Wait, what? Right there. I mean, there's <laughs> inherently son, a debate. Son, his <laughs> concerts are killing people. <laughs> How much more lit can you get? I mean, as slip, a fucking slip musician, concert, people Bruh, died. Who, the who, who people who? died? Who? Literally the who? <laughs> who? You talking about fifty years ago, dog? It's been fifty what years about ago. That country concert in Vegas. <laughs> Jeez, you remember that? Okay. One? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that wasn't because of the artist. Say what? That wasn't because well, we of the artist. That. There's no motive, though. There's no motive. Son, it's trampling is different, We still bro. don't know what happened with no. that, right? That's a little crazy. James Paddock, bro. Right? That investigation that just crazy. never... It just went away like Biggie. Went away. Yeah. That's weird. Huh. Yeah, this is interesting, man. Like, people are that... Uh, 
it's fucked up to admit, but I'm like, I gotta see a Travis Scott concert. That's what I'm saying. And now that all like the aren't you glad I left my shit early? I might not be here today. <laughs> I know, I'm grateful. Yo, Mark, I didn't feel like I needed to see a Travis Scott concert now you do, until bro. this. And yeah. now I'm like, what is going on here? Just stay yeah. back there. Don't get close. Just and all, uh, satanic panic marketing always helps the artist specifically. What's that mean? Like saying, oh, they're demonic. They're Satan. Yeah, it's a ritual, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is like the big like prevailing conspiracy on like Facebook and shit and WhatsApp. Yeah. And that kind of thing always helps because like it's offensive to like, I think, Christian puritanism, yeah. but isn't so egregious that like his audience will really care. Yeah. So it's like kind of just a perfect device. So all these people calling him Satan, I think actually helps because it makes it so absurd where they're like, all right, he's not literally Satan. And so it kind of creates like the it makes a distance and a buffer between like where he's actually culpable because you make yeah. him so much worse than what he actually did. You know <laughs> what I mean? So if I'm his PR team, I'm like, yo, push the Satan shit. Because then it's like he might have incited a, a riot, but he's not Satan. And so now you're not saying, look how bad he is. It's like, well, he's not that. You're like, you're pulling back yeah, from how you switch the combo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now we're not talking about dead people. We're talking about whether or not he's Satan. Push the Satan thing. Push the needle thing. Push everything <laughs> except he incited a riot. Yeah. Yo, how upset you think Chris Kardashian is? Why? That she canceled that fucking show this year. There's no season. Imagine how lit that season oh, would be. Wow. Oh, yeah. The wow. aftermath of killing eight people. They got all those episodes out of Kim getting a fake robbery. <laughs> These are real divorce. deaths. Kim and Kanye divorced. Yeah, Bruh. this is a big year. Pete. Oh, oh there's yeah. so much, dude. Yeah. The one year she stopped making up shit to happen, real things <laughs> happen. Actually happened. It's crazy. Dude, yeah. She's the real victim when you think about it. <laughs> This what, is wild. What did you think about that Kanye interview? Did you see the? Kanye I saw interview? the Drink Champs uh, highlights. Shout out to Drink Champs, man. Yo, loved it, Shout out bro. To y'all, y'all are these great, guys are man. great, man. They got a great podcast. Yeah, great interviews. There's like, they really care about music and they yep. care about the game and they have this insider information, but they also have such enthusiasm. Mm. That's what I love. They seem like, so like likable and yeah, positive and just fun. Excited about yeah. it. Like, yeah. A lot of motherfuckers that like, uh, you know, will do these uh, music interviews are kind of like jaded. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they're trying to like copy Sharla and that they have to like, uh, get the artist on something. Mm. Yeah. They have to expose the artist. Like, right. like I think they saw Sharla have so much success when he had a little bit of conflict mm -hmm. in the interview. Yeah. And so they're like these Sharla copycats, I don't think is good, but the way that these guys are like enthusiastic, excited, and then they will ask questions that are a little bit like yeah. dicey, yeah. but they'll they'll ask it almost like as a friend. Like you'd right. ask you like, yo, I got to ask you like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know. It just creates this like really fun atmosphere. And then yeah, he was going off. Yeah, they asked, they asked great questions. They like, really they did. got the best out of him. Like they knew kind of what to ask. They knew how to pursue it. Yeah, it was great. And Ye had to respect them because they're insiders. Yeah, yeah. and you know they got I mean? respect. Like, Nori got respect. He got respect. So he had to go become correct, and then he had his little fucking bipolar episode, and it was great to watch. Bro, dude. it was... He can be really entertaining, man. He's, he's so funny. Kanye can be really fucking so. entertaining. And am I a wild boy for liking the new boots? <laughs> the big you, ones? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, the yeah. big ones? Like I, I don't boots? like any... they kind of fun. I don't like yeah. any new fashion, and they always end up wearing it at some point, so who the fuck am I? But I thought them shits were trash at Bro, first. Bro, I kind of think they're heat. Yeah, I'm not taking Akash's word on, on fashion. I'll be honest. No. <laughs> Bro, you got pizza grease on your pants right now. Come Where? on, dog. <laughs> Do you no, see what are you talking about this? What are you talking about? Son, I didn't even know pizza. That's semen, bro. bro that's Come on now. Yeah, who's? <laughs> nah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, best part of the interview. What do you think? It's Big Sean. Oh, yeah. With that question, Big Sean. Which when, I actually thought was unfair. To Big Sean. I, yeah. What was fair that he said? Nothing he said was fair. It's that's hilarious. fair. But I actually get the criticism, but I feel like he said it. I mean, it's Kanye, so you can't really rationalize what he said. But I thought he said it in like an unfair way. Oh yeah, the the Biden that they didn't endorse me running for president. Obviously, you crazy motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, but Big like, Sean looking at him like you owe me six million dollars. The fuck I'm gonna vote for you for? But I'm upset because Sean was like, I'm apolitical. It's like that's not the reason. Yeah. <laughs> right. It has yeah. nothing to do with how much you care about politics. Right. Yeah. It has to do with the fact that Kanye was running for president, and you're like, yeah, he's not gonna be president. You also didn't have to say anything though. You know what I mean? What do you like, mean? if you run for president, yeah. I'm not going to vote for you. Thanks, bro. But I'm also not going to say anything. Right. You know what I mean? I'll be like, yo, if you want to run, what that's great. What are you great. talking about? You could be on the fucking cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, what can yeah. I be? What, what can I be if you're president? You're Whatever Secretary you want. of Defense, bro. Oh, let, oh really? Yeah, oh, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> why, why obviously? Because you're the most Republican one here, man. <laughs> what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. You put all the money into it. Yeah, we should call this just Secretary of Offense, bro, because we'd be yeah, going yeah, out there yeah, after these Very little defense, it seems like. What are we defending? Yeah. Let's go marketing. Offense. Dub going to be Treasury Secretary. Dub yeah. gonna be Treasury Secretary. 
Yeah. yeah. Keeper of the coin. President, <laughs> first lady. First lady. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but for real, uh, Kanye interview, it was cool to see Kanye making jokes. Yeah. Like he was actually being funny on purpose. Yes. Instead of like being caught off guard and then it's funny and we're kind of laughing at him. Right, right, right. Like when they asked about the Soldier Boy thing and they're like, so why'd you take him all the thing? He was like, you hear that verse? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he was trying to make them laugh. He was charming too. He was. Yeah. Kanye, Kanye back, dog. Kanye. Bro, what he a... called his haircut? The barber. Yeah, that's what I was going to bring up. Yeah. Edward N, N word hands. So good. Yeah. I mean, so good. I can't say it. I yeah. wish we could say it. <laughs> so good. But amazing. Like, yeah. actually have funny jokes. Yeah. Likeable. Yeah, you kind of get it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. 100%. See his new girl, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, he yeah. dropped a new shorty, too. Count yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of got slid in there. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, yeah. He, yeah. He's doing great. He's doing great. Yeah. Both of them upgraded. <laughs> <laughs> both of them upgraded. Happy for both of them. Yo, um... Shouts to Pete, man. That's a takedown. Right I love there. that kid, man. So, uh, you cannot, I fucking love this kid. You cannot hate on it. Like, you cannot hate on it, bro. And I'll say why. He got her to go to Staten Island, bro. <laughs> That's the most impressive part. That's so wild. He said, come over <laughs> to Kim Kardashian. That is... A very impressive thing. Like, usually when you're dating somebody, especially somebody with status, yeah, you're willing to accommodate. Uh, absolutely. You're willing to do whatever. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Also, Shorty's a mom. Like, she got kids and shit like yeah. that. Like, <laughs> like, how can I make this easier for you? Like, you put the kids to bed, and then we'll get a drink around the corner. Like, that's that's what I'm thinking. They're not that different in age. Probably got a lot in common. You know what I mean? Kids and Pete, they probably got <laughs> yeah, watch the yeah. same TV shows, all that. So... Can you come out to Staten, Staten Island? Staten Island, dog. That's a, that's hey, a I rented move, out a dog. rooftop in Staten Island. That's a baller move. Son, who gives a fuck? Give me a basement in Manhattan. Also, cheapest <laughs> rooftop. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, a rooftop in Manhattan is going to be big money you're spending. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. But yeah. rooftop Staten Island? Yeah. Get I a view Get a view of the city. Great yeah. views from there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. View. That's true. That's what it's all Did about. she have to take the ferry, yo? Nah. How the funny would that be? That Verrazano had to be. If you got to take the ferry, that's next level shit. But you know, an interesting thing about this is that this is the value of shooting your shot. Mm. So many people sitting here going, oh my God, how did this happen? Oh my God, how did he get Kim Kardashian? How did he pull this fucking off? I'll tell you how. Just fucking asking. Mm. No one is asking Kim Kardashian on a date. Mm. Mm. People are intimidated by Kim Kardashian. And if they are, it's like stupid sleazy DMs. It's not like yeah. actually real. But the amount of times that a guy actually genuinely kicks game to Kim Kardashian is so little. Mm -hmm. Like really, really little. Mm -hmm. And the dude fucking went for it. Yeah. And clearly got some game. Clearly charming. Right. And was able to pull it off. He also had a previous pedigree. Yes. You know what I mean? big, like when you qualify, you trade the paperclip for the house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you just kind of level up inch by inch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Also, yeah, they spent a week. I mean, you don't just shoot SNL on Saturday. You're there all week, probably 15 hours. I heard she was really leaning in, spending the time there. When you know, like, all right, you give her 10% of you on Monday, another little bit on Tuesday. I mean, that's why people always fall in love on sets or at least hook up. Yeah. yeah. Now, what are the odds of just fake? It's fake. Yeah. What are the odds? Like Pete Davidson makes headlines. Kim's out. She wants to get back in with someone that's going to be on headlines. It looks great for him. Okay. Let's just go to my Disney together. Let's hold hands. Assumption was it was like, uh, my first assumption is is Kim K is going. Wow. MGK and what's the girl's name? Megan, Megan, Megan Fox. Fox. Megan How Fox. dare you? How dare you forget Megan Fox? No, nah, she's fire. Come on, that's on me. My bad. <laughs> no disrespect to Megan Fox. Like, Come on, you know, dude. She's on point. But. She, they're going, wow, look how much the tabloids love this relationship. Yeah. Both of them. And are her sister, crazy her literal, literal sister is with fucking Travis, Travis Barker. Barker. Her sister's yeah. with Travis Barker. Their relationship. It's so interesting. Travis Barker by himself. Nobody really cares about. Uh, what's her name? Courtney by herself. Yeah. Nobody really cares about. All of a sudden, them together making out in public. The talk of the town. Yeah. yeah. We love relationships for some reason. Yeah, it's weird. We love romance. I think especially like odd couples. Odd couples, odd but couples. even the Bachelor and the Bachelorette, they're not odd. These are like the most normal, relatable fucking people, and we watch them Fair. religiously. Yeah. Yeah. There's something that we want to, I don't know, live vicariously through it. We want to see the train wreck. We want to know if they make it. I don't know what the fuck it is, but we're right. interested. Right. By we, I'm not really talking about the people in this room, yeah. <laughs> but America is interested, okay? Yeah. Um, 
So it would be the perfect situation to do that. It'd be a great way to grab some clout for both of them. Mm-hmm. And he also fits the prototype. Perfectly. Yeah. Right? Sad boy, tattooed, like... And yeah, fixer-upper. Yeah. Yeah. Just so it would be perfect, but I kind of have a feeling that it might be real. Not real like, hey, this is going to be my next husband or wife thing, but more like, hey, this would be fun. Someone's got to fuck Kim K. Yeah. <laughs> you think she doesn't get fucked? <laughs> yeah. Do you think she just stops fucking at yeah. 40? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's got to fuck her. Yeah. Yeah, Pete is really a... Vo- He's a rock star trapped in a comedian's profession. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, we talked about Eddie being a rock star back in the day. Your boy, Eddie. Pete's the closest thing we've had in terms of rock star lifestyle. Right. This guy got fucking tattoos, does movies whenever he wants, does TV whenever he wants, fucks everyone. Women love him. He's just a rock star living as a comedian. Yeah. This guy's not, he's a rock star, dude. Yeah. Nothing about him being a comedian makes sense. Him as a rock star makes fucking sense. Yeah. It is not that he's not funny, but just that life, that's a rock star's life, dude. Yeah. yeah. Hey, let me fuck Ariana Grande. You know what? I'm done with her. Let me fuck Cindy Crawford's daughter. You know what? I'm done with her. She, he's just a toy for all these women now. But it's a ladder. Yeah. You know what I mean? He just like, kept uh, climbing up that bitch. But it is really interesting. Like, relationships are more valuable than credits. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like people probably know Pete from his relationships more than they do like hundred percent sketches or something like that on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's really interesting. Like if you were a young Hollywood celeb and you were trying to like formulate your career and find your way to go to the top, it would be way more beneficial for you to date a person more famous than you than it would to be in a movie. Right. Yeah. You need to be in the public eye enough, but people are talking about fucking MGK nonstop. Yeah. Because of the, of the relationship with Rose. And I'm sure he has an album that's doing good and people are into the music, but the conversation isn't really about the music. Mm -hmm. It's what's her name again? Megan Fox. Fox. Megan Fox. Fox, Say Rose. Why can't I remember her fucking name? I don't know, dog. I don't know. Sounds like I'm hating. I'm not hating. I think she's absolutely beautiful. Been trapped in that hotel room, bro. That's what it is. I think I have. Yeah, you got cabin fever. She has like a line in a movie. You can't get it right. Can't get it right. (laughs) Maybe that was his line. (laughs) Megan Fox. (laughs) Rose and Amagunas. I was like, what? (laughs) Yeah, Rose is what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, We got to talk about the fights, but like, yeah, it's interesting. I wonder if like you're a manager these days and you start thinking about, you know, how you can design your talent's career. I think I wonder if you start thinking about relationships. No, they've been doing that design. for years. Well, uh, Tom Cruise, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who else? I mean, Lil Xan came out publicly and was like, "Yo, they set me up with Noah Cyrus, and I didn't even want to be in this relationship." This is when he was like going crazy about the label and all that stuff. Uh, but like, he came out and said it. Keep, keep going. I don't know a bunch, of, and I don't. I don't People know any think other that guy, ones. Sean Mendez. I think they say his relationship is fake. Who's that girl? Oh, I forget. Do a leak oh, on it. Oh, yeah. I know. I know a fake relationship that I can't say, but it's hilarious. I'll say off camera. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay. Actually, matter of fact, I'll say it, but I need you to bleep this, Miles. Make sure that you bleep it. Right? You ready? Make sure you got this time. Okay? Heard that. I heard How'd you that. Hear that. Uh maybe from you. Okay. Maybe. Okay, we said that. Maybe. But that I'm... is hysterical. Yeah. So funny. It's valuable. This relationship shit is valuable, man. And yeah. effective. Very yeah. It's really effective. Why? Eh, I don't know. I think it creates like a new like crossover dynamic. It's like when you do an episode where like they bring the cast together, like a crossover episode. You're like, wow, these two it's like universes when we did Righteous collided. and Ratchet. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. It's like you're tapping into their fan base. Yeah. You have your fan base. Now you're tapping into their fan base. Yeah. And those fan bases cross pollinate and yeah. then both parties win. Yeah. And ideally, not ideally, like usually it's very rare that you're going to date someone who has your same fan base. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, at least you shouldn't. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, if you're, it, if you're doing it, if you're doing it for clout, clout. yeah. Yeah. They yeah. never do. It's always some odd couple. Yeah. Oh, that's why the odd couples work. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. So should we not believe in any of these? I'm looking at an article right now of top uh, fa- fans thought these uh, relationships were fake. And number seven is Pete Davidson and Kate Beckinsale. So people have thought this before about Pete Davidson. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was with Kate Beckinsale for a yeah, bit. Yeah, that was yeah. after. She's a piece, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, yeah. he knows how to pick them. If they are fake, <laughs> he knows how to pick the fake relationship. I mean, like, God bless. And also, like, what are the benefits with it? Is it like some green card shit where it's like, 
you you pretend to be married, like maybe sometimes you fuck, but it's not an actual real relationship, mm. and then the person gets the green card, and now you're straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I've I've met people that were like that, They're like yeah. started out as a fake relationship, and they yeah. just hung out so much so they could like learn about each other, so they could pass the test. Right. And Fair then enough. it was like, fuck it, all right, we out here. Yeah. You know, maybe that's what it is. Pete might just be super charming. You spend a little Wait, time with him. The point where no, you spend a little time like, with him. <laughs> yeah. Spend a little time with him on a setup, and then you're like, you know what? I like this guy. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Um. I don't know. What do you think? Real or fake? Yeah. You don't I, buy it. Uh, not really. Sounded, Even if it's not. Let us play, dude. <laughs> I mean, what are you doing? No, I like this. I think. Yeah, it's, I'm, no, I'm talking about Mark. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I like. I, I like the the. I just wants to believe like girls are trying to fuck comics. He's like, yeah. yeah. He's like, <laughs> finally, <laughs> we're the rock stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. go get him, babe. Pete. Look how lucky you are. See, <laughs> if it wasn't for you, I'd be fucking yeah. Kim Kardashian. You're basically, you're basically <laughs> Kim Kardashian, babe. Yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I understand your skepticism. I'm usually skeptical of any Hollywood relationship. Yeah. Um. The only reason I was skeptical is because the picture came out with them on the roller coaster. Yeah, I was just going to say. And it's just like, well, we're trying to keep this low key. It's like, well, why go on the ride that takes pictures? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's not even paparazzi. The ride is the paparazzi. Yeah. Right. So you want that getting out yeah. because it might not even be a picture of you. The other person on that ride with you can ask for that picture. Yeah. Right. Right. They're in the row three. You're in row four. And they get to post that on Instagram, and then the story goes wild, yeah. and it's like, "Oops, we didn't know." Right. You can also shut down the park easily. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, Kim Kardashian, ball yeah. out, boy. Yeah, yeah. 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 So maybe I it's true love. Say again. Maybe it's true love, though. Who am I to say? I want to go to the wedding if it is. <laughs> Did you guys watch the fights this weekend? I watched uh, the Kamaru fight. Pretty awesome. That was great. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Right, he's unstoppable. I, yeah. Is Yo, Colby did his thing though. I thought after the second round he was done. Come on strong. But that motherfucker fought, dude. That's I think right. he won two rounds at least. Yeah. I think it was I think it was three two. Three two is what I would have thought. But I think you could probably give that second round, make it like a ten, ten eight. eight round. Yeah, because yeah. he got him twice. Yeah. I mean, I thought he was it was done after that second round. Yeah. I thought if it was ten more seconds, it's over. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah. It was close. But to do that and then win two out of the next three rounds is pretty fucking hey, impressive. Listen, I, both of them won. This is what I love about UFC. You could lose and win. Mm -hmm. Like both of them law. Well, well, sorry. Michael Chandler and um, Colby Covington lost their right. fights. Mm -hmm. Neither of their stock went down per se. Yeah. Because we watch the fights because of entertainment purposes. Yeah. Right. We're like, I just want to be entertained. So who's going to entertain me the most? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fight of the night. That's all I want. That's like, it. Yeah. That's who really wins. Yeah. And Chandler was tweeting today with or yesterday with uh, Conor McGregor. Mm -hmm. And he's like, 2022, a picture of Conor McGregor. After a loss, he's yeah. calling out right. one of the biggest names of the division after a loss. And then Conor goes, I think we'll definitely do that later on down the line. Great fight, mate. Mm. Yeah. In, in boxing, you lose, you don't get to call people out. Right. Yeah. You don't get to say who the next fight is. None of that right. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But in MMA, if you are entertaining, you hold the fucking cards. Nate Diaz holds the fucking cards because he's entertaining. Doesn't yeah. matter he lost his last fight. Leon Edwards, the guy he fought, holds no cards. Yeah. Can't call out nobody. You think we can rationalize it easier because UFC has so many different like components to it? Keep you going. know what I mean? Like if you're up against like a wrestler, but you're an amazing striker and you just get like locked out, like arm bar in the first round, it's like, all right, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a bad matchup, blah, blah, blah. Whereas with boxing, it's like you throw punches, you get punched. Like that's all you do. So yeah. if you get knocked out, you got punched more than the other guy. Like hmm. it's, it's one single thing. Yeah. It's... So it's like a single metric. Whereas like with MMA, there's so many different variables into a fight where you're like, oh, well, you know, technically like you can rationalize a loss a lot easier. Yeah. Especially a decision loss. Right. Exactly. Like with a decision loss to Nate, you almost look at it like if it kept going, he might got him. Right. Even with Colby, I don't think if it kept going that Kamara would have lost still, mm -hmm. but you can he you can make the argument like Colby was coming on right as the rounds went on yeah yeah, yeah. and so you're like if this was on the street because I think we view it as a street fight you're mm -hmm. like if this was on the street yeah 
shit. Like maybe if they just yeah. kept fighting, there's no rounds. Maybe if they yeah. kept fighting, right, it would have got gassed and that would have been it. It would have been it. But then you could also say maybe in the second round, Kamara would have just finished him. Yeah. But yeah, there's that. I think uh, Nate Diaz even said that after uh, his loss to Leon Edwards, like in the fifth round. Remember he rocked him, right? And he like staggered him. He was, dude, if this is a street fight, it's over. It's like, yeah, mm. yeah. you're wobbling around. You got yeah. saved by the belt. Yeah. Right? You know? Now it's still your job to knock that motherfucker out. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, there's something different about the sport. It's like provide entertainment, and I think Michael Chandler. In his fight, realized he wasn't going to beat Gaethje. Mm. And I think he tried to win the night. Mm. Uh, just put on the best show. I think there was a moment where yeah. he started like playing to the crowd more. And Gaethje's still landing, but he's able to take the shots. Maybe Gaethje's a little bit tired. He's just, his leg's starting to get chewed up. But he's really playing into the yeah. crowd and like inviting him in and going like. I think this I saw that moment on Twitter when like he's getting fucking rocked in the rocked. face and then he just charges back at him and like, yeah. let's go. That shit will make you like somebody. Yeah. So Chandler's a smart guy. Like, he really understands the marketing aspect of UFC. He's just went from, I think it was like Bellator, and now he's, there's a huge difference in talent from Bellator to UFC. Right. Like, massive. Mm -hmm. Like, UFC has really monopolized all the best fighters. Right. And it is a dip when you go into the other promotions. So that's why you see these guys struggle when they play there in the UFC. I mean, Ben Askren was a dominant fighter, then goes into the UFC. And out, he yeah. struggles, man. Yeah. yeah, he gets worked. And uh, so there is a big difference. So, like, I think Chandler is realizing that, you know, and he had an amazing first fight against, like, Dan Hooker. Mm -hmm. But then after that, you know, Charles Oliveira knocks him out. Yeah. Right. And then Justin Gaethje, it was a great fight, but Justin, Justin dominated him yeah. outside of the first round. And but he understands, listen, I can I can get a big payday again as long as I just make this loss entertaining. Yeah. So I'm going to bleed. I'm going to swing. I'm yeah. going to make it look crazy. I'm going to be out there. And you know what? I get fucking paid. But if I get finished, one, at least I got finished in an exciting way. But if I don't get finished, I think I'm good. Maybe yeah. he lost a little bit Even of Even if you get finished, though, didn't Whitaker get finished by Izzy? And then he's coming back and he's getting like, they might have a rematch. Yeah. He just built his name back up. He had to build his name back up. But yeah. that next fight with Whitaker was almost like uh, he was back in a contender situation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And like he won a few of those fights. Right. And he won them in like a really impressive fashion. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it was like, okay, he's the next in line. And then he had to wait for Izzy to basically clean out the division. And okay. that's kind of what's left. And then you're, you're back. Yeah. I, and I like, I like Robert Whitaker as a fighter. Like he's a really good fighter. I don't think the UFC likes him. Mm -hmm. In other words, like Why? I think they like stars. Yeah, right. he's just not. Yeah, yeah, like the UFC loves Mike Perry, just he's not good enough. Yeah, to yeah. fight the guys in the UFC. But like, if Mike Perry was as good as Robert Whitaker, yeah, give him whatever he, he wants. A fucking superstar. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. they like the characters. They like the stars. They like Colby. Uh, Colby was talking about this. Yeah. Colby was about. To, I heard a crazy story. Like Colby was about to get cut, no matter win or loss. Yeah. Mm. In his fight when he went to Brazil. Yeah. He went to Brazil to fight uh, maybe Damian Maia or something like that. Somebody. In Brazil. Win or loss, they said they're cutting him. They just don't like his character or whatever. Afterwards, he records that promo where he's like, Brazil, I own you, this, that, the other. It might even have been after Connor did the I own Brazil thing. Uh, okay. But he records that promo. The promo goes so viral, UFC can't let him go because there's already so much free marketing. Yeah. Like... Imagine you got 10 million impressions. You literally go to your marketing department. And you go, what would it cost us to get 10 million impressions? Yeah. And they go, uh, $300,000. Yeah. We go, okay, right. why don't we just keep him for one more $300 fight and $300,000 fight. And then we got it for free. Yeah. Or we sign him for three more. Fight. It's yeah. like, you have to create the buzz. Yeah. You know? And it's so funny. You see the, the, the fighters understand this and mm -hmm. then just start to lean into it. Right. And there's very few fighters in the UFC that just go, Hey man, I just come to fight. I don't want to deal with the politics and all that shit. It's like even the Dagestani guys. Yeah. Right. The Dagestani guys are the most respectful, like Muslim, you know, we have to respect the sport, respect this. You may, uh, Khabib is all out here. Like, why do we even need ring girls? What's the point of yeah, this? Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like now these young Dagestani motherfuckers. Yeah. Hey, I eat everybody. Yeah. yeah. The division yeah. is mine. Plan to the lore. Like I wrestled bears, bro. I've read, yeah. Like we all wrestle bears. Like my dad's a bear, my mom's a bear. Like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a bear, bro. Hundred yeah. percent. So it's it's really interesting how like you can get people to behave in a certain way just by reward. Yeah. You don't even have to tell them to do it. They'll mm -hmm. see the other people being rewarded for the behavior, and they'll just naturally fall in love. Yeah, because you have to for survival. Yeah, it was pay per view. We gotta you gotta be worth paying for. It. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, what are we doing? Yeah.
He's yeah. fighting. To, motherfuckers, that's a very small percentage of people who just want to see fights. Yeah. I have to be emotionally invested to watch people beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. I have to have a rooting interest. Yeah. It's like, so true. A fight for me as a very much a casual when I don't know the per, the personalities involved, you need I carnage. have no interest. You need carnage. Or carnage. I need yeah. carnage. And even then, I'm like, I don't even hate one of these guys. They're just getting the shit kicked. Both of them getting the shit kicked yeah. out of each other. But if I don't like one of the guys or I really like one of the guys, do what you got to do, man. Yeah. So I think you need to build up persona. Yeah. You got to be really well liked and or hated. Yeah. Izzy loved and hated. You got to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. Was, what was your favorite fight on the card? Probably Gaethje versus Gaethje. Chandler. Yeah. I mean, Gaethje is just such a fascinating guy. The way that he fights is just unbelievable. What do you mean? Just the amount of risk he takes. Oh, yeah. Like he sits there in the pocket. He puts himself in harm's way on purpose. Yeah, stays exposed. Yeah, he 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 has the skill to not. Yeah, right. Like he could be a way less interesting fighter. Yeah. Like, but he chooses to stay in the zone, and he counters well. He'll slip, but he understands he's going to get cracked, and he gets cracked. He gets wobbled. He gets hurt. Stays in there. Yeah. And basically says the same thing every time. I'm going to take them into deep water. I'm going to drown them, and that's what the fuck he did. Yeah. And Michael Chandler didn't drown, but he took him into deep water. Right. Like Chandler had Gaethje fucking hurt. Yeah, it looked like he almost had him out of there in the first. Right. Just like with uh, Charles Oliveira, and then he couldn't get it done the first, and then mm, second, mm. Gaethje came on strong. Those mm. leg kicks are just fucking crazy. I yeah. just love watching the guy fight. I'll just keep watching him fight, and I think he's fighting for the belt next, Charles mm. Oliveira or Dustin Poirier, and then um, we're gonna see what happens, man. Do you think Kamaru? They're saying he might be the greatest pound for pound. Ever, I think some people are saying they're comparing him to a. Uh, I think they were saying um, welterweight. Welterweight. Then, I saw some people saying he has a shot at being. The best I mean, look, you look at the numbers; it's impressive. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's really impressive. He's dominant, man. I think he's only lost one. I thought it was like maybe his first. He was like his fight first fight, fight like I think, or second fight, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So it's unbelievable, and he just keeps getting better. Like the striking. That's is, what I was gonna say. It seems like he keeps getting better. Yeah. It seems like he just keeps getting better. Yeah. Yeah. As of now, they're saying that. Leon Edwards is going to fight Masvidal December 11th. Yeah. So you think if Leon Edwards beats Masvidal, which he should. Yeah. That would that be the next Kamaro fight? That could be the next Kamaro fight. Or you make or you make uh, Colby fight Masvidal or something like that. I mean, I don't know. Masvidal probably needs a win. You know what I mean? Like Masvidal has lost. He's so likable. But... times, but it's Leon Edwards 19-3 and three against yeah. Masvidal. 35 and 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leon should win that fight. But there's like some good back, you know, story to that fight. I yeah. mean, like, Masvidal punched him in mm -hmm. backstage. It was oh, really yeah. Cool. Oh, shit. Yeah, so it was like, there's like fun build up to that fight. And then Masvidal can promote the fuck out of a fight. He knows how to do it. He's an interesting guy. But if he loses again, we're looking at like a few losses in a row. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I just, I'm just curious. I'm curious to see who Colby fights next. Yeah, I was wondering that. Had a lot of heart, man. And yeah, I think he won people over at the end with the, the sign of respect between both of them. I think even people who hated Colby were like, oh, that was cool. Yeah. That was a cool moment. Yeah. People like to see heart. Yeah. They like to see someone get their ass fucking kicked and keep on going. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he did. Really? I mean, that's really what Rocky's all about, right? Yeah. The whole movie is based on this guy who gets his ass kicked and then just keeps on going. Yeah. And I think there's something relatable to that. Maybe in life, most it's people It's a metaphor like, for life. Yeah. Life is mostly getting your ass kicked. Yeah. And then you just keep going and you, you should win if you keep yeah. going. Yeah, but yeah, what a fucking card, man. It was just unbelievable. And then Canelo obviously fought. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Canelo is just dominant. Did what we all thought he was going to do. Yeah, but Plant was Plant was no slouch, right? Plant no. was nasty. No, good. He's good. But Canelo's just on a different level. And he's fighting so far above his weight class. Like, Canelo's just making it hard for himself. Yeah. You know, Canelo started fighting, I think, at 154 pounds. I think mm -hmm. he fought uh, Floyd at 155. Mm -hmm. Floyd dominated him. Right. But, like... That's that will eventually be Floyd's greatest victory. What's really interesting happening right now with like Floyd and Canelo is that the greater Canelo gets in terms of his legacy, yeah, the greater that victory, that flawless victory that Floyd had over Canelo becomes. That was the most. Again, don't know much. I saw, I don't know Floyd's last eight nine fights. That was the most impressive one. Yeah, like I've watched everyone from De La Hoya on. That was the one where I was like, God damn, this is a clinic. Yeah. But Canelo wasn't nearly the same fighter he is now, right? So they say. I mean, I mean, it seems like he's on a different level. Yeah, I think that's what happens when you fight Floyd. When you fight everyone else, you seem like you're on a different level. 
When you Fair enough, Floyd, but Triple G. So this is on. this is what I was wondering about Canelo's plays in history. He lo- loses to Floyd. Triple G. People thought he lost a first and second fight, right? Debatable. Then they had the trilogy, and then he beat his ass pretty pretty handily the third time, right? I mean, they, all of them are debatable. So all I, of them I, debatable? I thought that the first one was really close, and it could have gone Triple G. Okay. I think the second one people thought that could have been Canelo, but they're both debatable. Okay. But he he won both of them. But then he has a steroid scandal. So, right. like, this is a guy who, it seems like, very far outside, he's going for one of the greatest ever. How much does all that stuff early on hurt him? The, the steroids with the meat. I think what hurts him is that there's this, we don't know his personality that much, and he doesn't, doesn't speak English, so he doesn't, like, resonate to the American yeah. people. And just boxing is on the decline. We're just not that interested in it. Right. Like, if Canelo was an MMA fighter fighting in the UFC, and he was this dominant, yeah. this would be a different story. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about global superstar. Right. And right now, because there's not that much interest in boxing, there's not a lot of American boxers that we're, you know, uh, super, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it, like uh, just engaged by, you mm-hmm. know, like they don't have a promotional apparatus like the UFC. The UFC is constantly putting out these fucking crazy promo clips that make every fighter on the roster, no matter how many losses they have, look like the greatest fighter in history. Right. So you're just getting charged up constantly. Like the WBC, who was one of the sanctioning parties for boxing, is not doing that with its boxers. Right. There's no promo coming out with boxers. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're a boxer and you put your own promo out. And if they're doing it, it usually sucks. Yeah. You need the best editors in the world. UFC is hiring the best editors in the world to make that shit look incredible. And it gets right. you gassed up. Right. And the only time that happens with boxers is if they're fighting for HBO. Yeah. And HBO or Showtime or whatever one of these pay-per-view outlets is. But like pay- those pay-per-view outlets don't own the boxer. Right. So they have no vested interest in making that boxer big. Uh-huh. They're just doing these one-off things. Yeah. Like maybe you have a deal with Showtime. Maybe you have a two-fight deal. Mm-hmm. But the UFC owns these motherfuckers. So they're like, if I own them, I'm going to make them as big as possible so I can make as much money on them as possible. Right. Right? Like, if I am paying them a guaranteed salary, mm-hmm. no matter how popular they are, this is their guaranteed salary, I might as well make them more popular so that I get that difference yeah, in yeah, income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? If right. I make them $100,000 popular and I'm paying them $100,000, I break even. Uh-huh. This was pointless. Right. But if I have a $100,000 fighter, a guy who I'm paying $100,000 a fight, and they have a $500,000 interest, right? I just made $400,000. Yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. to cooking up clips. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the, uh, it's more exploitative, but it might be better for the fighter in the long run. It's, that's the thing. It's way better for the fighter because you build your career out. Yeah. Like if I'm a fighter, I'm going with the UFC, even if they pay less. It's like Netflix. Yeah. It's like everybody who's doing Netflix specials outside of Dave Chappelle is accepting less money to be on Netflix. And yes. Netflix knows that, mm-hmm. right? Because that's the golden goose. Yeah. Right. So then you go, OK, I'll do it for far less than I would do on some other platform. But ideally, I get all these eyeballs and then people want to see me on the road. And they want to see me do these other things. Right. You build your career that way. There are fighters that fight the UFC. You let the UFC build the fucking shit out of you. Even if you don't win, go fight in a lesser promotion for more money. You've become famous. Yeah. The UFC made you famous. You yeah. try to sell promotional stuff. Like there's a couple of fighters who actually get it. They're like, listen, I don't make that much fighting for the UFC, but they made me famous or gave me the opportunity to become famous. And then I can sell all these other things, sponsorships like crazy. Mm-hmm. UFC is not taking their sponsorship. Yeah. You got a CBD company giving you money. Get that money. Go, go, ahead, go ahead. Izzy got a CBD sponsor. Go ahead. Boom. Sean O'Malley's doing it. Yeah. Izzy got tons. It's like use the opportunity, use the platform, use the leverage because no other promotional company knows how to promote fighters like this. Yeah. Now, you could always fight for more, you know, even wages and that kind of shit. Like, go for it. I'm not telling you not to. Right. But also recognize what you got. Yeah. If you got in this game to only be a fighter and not do any promo and not entertain, you got in the wrong game. You should have stayed in the Olympics. Yeah. Like, the Olympics is for you just win and you don't have to bring anything fun or fancy. Right. Now you're in entertainment. Yeah. Some of the guys know it and those motherfuckers get paid. Nobody buying your fucking pay per view because I'm not spending fifty dollars because you're technical. Yeah. So you're good at fucking grapples. I don't care. Yeah. I couldn't care less. Yeah. Make me like you or make me hate you. That's it. And then That's I'm in. it, man. That's it. What else we got, man? You want to do feelings no facts? Let's do feelings no facts. Okay, Miles, I'm gonna need you to pull the graph for me. All right, I just texted it to you. Now this is uh, <laughs> this is apparently from NYC Open Data came out with which restaurants in New York City have the most rodent violations? And the results are not shocking, okay? If you look at the very bottom, Indian restaurants. Yep, I believe that. 50% of Indian restaurants have, have a rodent, rodent violation in New York City. You're not paying for that shit. 
Akash, do you have a do you have a rebuttal? Yeah, I'm proud of us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're saving money, obviously. You're still eating the food. You guys still love it. Wow, <laughs> you guys are slightly dude. above Caribbean restaurants. The restaurant. most is Caribbean though. Who saw that wow. coming? Which I kind of get. That's disappointing. Wait, what? What do you mean? It's not even listen, if you see roaches in an Indian restaurant, it's almost more authentic. No, roaches or rodent. This is rodent. Yeah. Oh, we talking mice specifically. Yeah. Mice or rat. Mice or rat, yeah. Which actually makes sense because Caribbeans This list make... is racist. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, this list is racist. Well, on the other side, you have donuts. And who owns most of the Dunkin' Donuts in New York City? Oh, that's Indians take, holding it down right there. So if Indians are making American food, no rodents. If they're making their own food, rodents everywhere. Son, we can't help it if the rodents smell delicious food, bro. What do you want from us? I, my point with the Caribbean thing is that Caribbeans can make the worst food taste amazing. So part of me thinks that they're just fucking eating the rats. Whoa! You know what I mean? They make ox, ox they make oxtail delicious. Interesting point. All Whoa. all Caribbean food is like I don't know if I eat that. Then you eat it, and you're like, oh, it's amazing. I mean, these are staggering. I mean, it is crazy that all the third world countries are at the bottom of the list. They're just well, not as bothered by rats. Jewish and kosher food. That one's at the top, and they hate rats the most, just despite you know, <laughs> despite the obvious implication. <laughs> Jewish kosher. I'll let you wow. sit on that one, Mark. I'll let you sit with it, Mark. I'm just, I'm, I'm saying it's ironic. <laughs> Enjoy the It's ride, ironic, sir. okay? I've studied a lot of German propaganda oh, and they had some choice good. words for you people. Oh, it's so <laughs> the good. least amount is 15%. Yeah, so only 15%. The average was 35%. It's New York City, bro. So I'm going to California. 35% Son, of you, restaurants yeah, have a road of violation. You know this about your city. It's what? mad rodents everywhere. Yeah, but I... Ugh. Also, a road of violation might just mean, oh, there's... It just means you've had one. There's rat droppings in yeah. the fucking... Behind the fridge. Yeah, well, that means there's rats. That means there's rodents. Yeah, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah but I'm not saying that you're, you're not yeah, eating yeah. there. There's fucking rats running over your foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I managed a restaurant that had uh, mice. It's not surprising. Yeah, they had mice. <laughs> and we had to get the mice out of there. They shut us down, and we had to get the mice out of there and like you know, clog up every hole. In that also, how old were you when you were managing these restaurants? Like 23 or 24. <laughs> yeah, 22, 23, 24. Do you think you were well-equipped to manage a restaurant no, at 22? Not at all. Not at all. No. Did, I was well-equipped <laughs> to convince people I was well-equipped. Yeah. But uh, I, it wasn't good. I, I would love like, to see 22-year-old you trying to fucking manage a restaurant. Oh, God, it was bad. <laughs> like, what do we do with these rats? You know, I'll slap them in their faces, these yeah, bitch-ass yeah. rats. No, they shut us down. I remember that. And we <laughs> yeah. had to get them fucking rats out of there. Right? I'm from New York. Why can't you have one rat in a restaurant? The yeah. fuck? What, it was a restaurant in New York? Yeah, I think you knew me. The one Biscuit Barbecue? No, I definitely didn't know it was you. was out there in Brooklyn? Definitely didn't know you. You've worked in Brooklyn? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, dude. What he works in Brooklyn now. Yeah, we'll we work in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. What, are you you <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? First of all, don't... Hey, you I just want to be... Here, I like being around <laughs> Indians. In Brooklyn. And we have a rap problem. This is not a <laughs> restaurant in Brooklyn, yo. This is a studio in Brooklyn. This is where Netflix is. Yeah, exactly. This is a Netflix studio. When I worked in a restaurant... There would be the rats would eat the poison that was like under the cabinets and stuff. That's yeah. the idea. And then they'd come out and just be like drunk oh, on poison. Fire. And then a chef would come and fucking smack them with something heavy and oh kill them. But they weren't God. fast. So they'd come out and like a, a waitress would scream. But it wasn't like it was running across her foot. It was like drunkenly coming out like. <laughs> uh, <that'd be> even <laughs> worse. Yeah. Yeah. Because if they're fast enough, they'll they'll be only seen by one or two people. Yeah. But if they're nice and slow. Oh. Yeah, the whole restaurant. that shit was yeah. mad sad. I saw a poisoned rat on the sidewalk, and there were just kids just looking at it, Oy. and he was just like kind of dying, like on his side, but like breathing heavy. And I was like, God, yeah. like what a weird way to start your morning, like watching yeah. children see death. Yeah, like, so, New York is a wild city. I had to go to a podcast, and be like, anyway. <laughs> That's crazy though that the best is donuts, and fifteen percent of donut places have had mice. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'm it's assuming New throwing, York City. They're yeah. on the first floor. Think how many first floor apartments got mice. Yeah. All businesses are on the first floor and it's yeah. food everywhere. Yeah. It's going to be mice. Yeah. I feel like you just we, found out there's like germs on like Coke cans. No, because I always. <laughs> whoa, thought, whoa, whoa, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, wait a minute. What? <laughs> You're like, wait, a dog's mouth has germs in it? That's gross. I just knew that there were neighborhoods that had a lot of rats. Yeah, it's called New York City. Bro. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> like if you look up like uh, First Street between First and Second Avenue, that's the most like rat infested area in it's New disgusting. York. Disgusting. Really? It's disgusting. Yeah. Wait, actually, in Manhattan, yeah, like Brooklyn. Came, under there the was BQE. like a, there was like a, there was like a meat factory there back in the day. So they just started, started to like create their homes and shit there. And then like you can't walk down that street. Like we put the garbage on the streets in New York. If you walk down the street and just like nudge the garbage, you'll see ten rats run out in of that there. neighborhood. That specific block, really. First street between First and Second Avenue. If you walk between my house and Mark's house in Brooklyn. Under the BQE, there's just a huge empty spot. Oh yeah, behind. yeah, yeah. it's it's almost like a, a zoo. They're behind a fence. Yeah, 
And there's hundreds. So much so that me and Shifty were walking home from Mark's place. And he goes, yo, I got to take a picture of this. And, <laughs> and they're just there, right? Hundreds. Yeah, dude. It's just... They dude. weren't contested during COVID. They, they Say what? They just weren't contested during COVID. They yeah. yeah. yeah, they, yeah they, they were the great city COVID. COVID. They were the only ones that weren't afraid of the virus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they never shut down, dude. They were Florida, these rats. I don't know yeah. if we spoke about this on the podcast, but like the outdoor dining thing. Yeah. They're all under there. Yeah, it's like this has been the best thing for rats. Yeah. Yeah. Did we talk about this? No, yeah. but it makes sense. But like, yeah, so you're basically you're eating on wood that has these little spaces, right? So mm-hmm. food is falling through the cracks and they have a safe, secure, dark place to go and eat it's the just food. food is falling on their faces. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's like warm. fucking it's buffet. It's warm, bro. You get heat from the street. Like, yeah. Right? Nice. Yeah. I mean, it's just the perfect <laughs> place for rats to fester, right? Yeah. So every time you're eating on one of those little stations outside, I don't know what they call them, like the uh, those little bank outdoor dining, dog outdoor houses. dining thing. Yeah, the yeah. doll houses. So it's like every single time, there's definitely rats. Yeah. yeah. Which if that counts towards the, the rotor violation, Forget it's a hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What else? All right. Ted Cruz was asked about Texas seceding from the United States. Mm-hmm. He was like, "No, nah, I don't think we're there yet, but I get the sentiment. I get why people want to." Cause, why? Because if cut. we secede, Yo, Texas, y'all ain't going nowhere. Shut the fuck up. If he goes, if we secede, we take NASA, we take the military, we take all the oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people are going crazy. And yo, then yo. here's the best part. Before you say that, let me yeah, say, yeah. They said, all right, who would be president? And he said, Joe Rogan. He might be the president of Texas. Let me tell y'all something right now. <laughs> I mean this sincerely. Texas, cut that shit out. <laughs> y'all not allowed to go nowhere. So sit the fuck down and shut the fuck up. Talk about seceding from the great union. What happened the last time part of the country wanted to secede? Crack, crack. <laughs> Backs got cracked. Total war. Tecumseh Sherman. We would come light that whole thing up. Mm. Have the whole fucking state looking like Austin. <laughs> if Texas even dares secede from the union, we'll make the whole state Austin. That's what we'll do. We'll send the squad down there. The squad will run fucking Texas. Literally the squad. The squad. Yeah. Literally. AOC. AOC. Yeah. The Muslims. Ilhan Omar. <laughs> <laughs> AOC and the Muslims, right? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. it is. AOC and the Muslims. Sounds are like a good down. band, actually. Say what? It sounds like a nice band. Yeah. yeah AOC and they the can Muslims. They make music. <laughs> that same song. I'm <laughs> 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 the kisses. <laughs> I've never heard the kisses. I don't think we could beat the whole union, but state for state, we'd fuck up every state. Yo, 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 yo. Every wait, state one on one. Yo, yo, Ain't nobody care about that shit. Yeah, that's because you You're say, not going nowhere. That's because y'all pussies You're in New York. You're not going nowhere. That's because New York can't be yo, yo, nobody. Son, y'all son, pussies. Son, son, son. Y'all don't, pussies. Hey, don't, don't let us call in some loans. We the Bank of Bravos out here in this bitch. Don't mm. let China we'll call, call in some, some loans. loans, son. Don't we'll let call China call in, call in some loans. China calling your shit too? They're calling China your shit calling first, your shit bro. Too? Hey. Ain't no first. You us. No, we not. Try to not act if we don't want to be. Not if we don't want to be. Not if we don't want to be. Not if we don't want to be. Oh, okay. We just won't pay him. We just won't pay him. What you going to do not pay him? What happened last time someone tried to secede? That was different. What bro. happened? That was different. Y'all can't have nothing no more. No, no, We're no. We're going to take your flag. We're going to take everything. I'm not even going to call Texas. Who you going to call I'm, it? I'll, I'll take Texas back. What you going to call it? You think Joe Rogan is going to let us New lose? York. See, last time. <laughs> it's called New York. The newest York yeah. that there is. Last so time we had Robert Lee, he wasn't as good as Grant. Now we got Rogan, bro. Rogan ready for war at all times, Rogan bro. Rogan with us. Son, Rogan ain't with you, Rogan dog. Rogan with us. You think Rogan wants to secede? I don't see a Texas flag in this studio. I see an American flag. Mm. That's what I'm trying. That secession shit. Cut that shit out. Keep it out your fucking mouth. I don't want to hear it. If I hear it again, it's going to be a problem. Text Rogan. See if you want to be president of Texas right now. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a text him right now. See if you want to be president of Texas. <laughs> I'm going to text him. Well, who said he's going to be president of uh, Texas? Ted Cruz. Ted, Ted Cruz. Cruz. I don't I'm even t- want to defend Ted Cruz, yo. No, you know, no, that's what it is. I think Ted Cruz is trying to get in with Rogan. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He probably. He want to be on the podcast. Yeah, Rogan will be the president. Yeah, Boring yeah, ass yeah, podcast. Yeah. That'll be. Yo, Ted <laughs> Cruz Christ. is a fucking loser. He also got into beef with Big Bird. Ooh. Ted Cruz. Over what? Big Bird got vaccinated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, is Ted an anti-vax? There's a very funny exchange just, from a Big Bird <laughs> yeah. uh, verified saying he got the vaccine, and then Oscar the Grouch, the verified from them being like, I don't know, man, I don't trust these vaccines. I've been doing <laughs> no. a lot of reading. I think they're using them to make us gay. It's a really funny uh, exchange. The actual Maybe accounts? it's Photoshop, but yeah, somebody tends to send me. Yeah. Maybe it's somebody Photoshop's, sent, fam. There's no way. I hope it's not. Why can't it not be? Can I live in this world? <laughs> you can, but it's just Oscar the true. Grouch is hilarious. Yeah. Ted Cruz actually did respond and said, yo, this is propaganda. Stop trying to tell no, us. No yeah. shit, dumbass. Stop, stop trying to get our kids vaccinated. Obviously, fucking retard. Would you? Th- <laughs> we didn't even figure that out. Big Bird yeah. got vaccinated for real. Yeah. Stupid fucking. <laughs> Olivia Rodrigo doing propaganda. At least this one I trust. Yo, thank God we got this vaccine for for uh, 
people complain about, bro. <laughs> what would they complain about if we didn't have this whole vaccine? Yeah, nothing issue? to talk about, bro. Like, literally, what would they complain about? Mm. What do you think they would? What issue do you think that they would make up? You talk about like masks or something. Talk about like that. Trump for a while. Masks and well, vaccines. Trump is done. Let's say there's no masks or vaccines. What Let's say would COVID be the is issue? good. What is yeah. the issue? Oh, critical race theory. Yes. Critical race theory. Yeah. Actually, the thank one. God we have the vaccine. <laughs> I don't want to fucking deal with that critical race theory. Shit. Yeah, that's a good point. That thing is too smart for people. <laughs> like just hearing critical, most people go, I ain't learned about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Do you know what I mean? Like if it was called anything else, yeah. If it was called like learn about whiteness, like yeah. I think people would actually get into it. But critical race theory is yeah. just too sophisticated. It's yeah. not worth the time. I tried reading about it. And I was like, yeah, I didn't have to make it this exactly. Just dumb that shit down. You know? <laughs> exactly. I refuse to learn what it is. <laughs> you read it and you'll be like, you could have done this simpler. Yeah. Do you want to tell me? Son, the, the language is mad flowery. Yeah. <laughs> Shit is mad flowery, bro. Yeah. I don't want to hear it. You get flower it. I don't want That's what critical race theory is what the rest of America thinks when we hear Texas wants to secede. <laughs> that's what we think we're like what also puerto rico you're never gonna be a state <laughs> like, why not never. why not fuck the flag up son symmetry you better go and get nine more <laughs> but we can lose one state go get nine more states. Yeah, what if what we, we consolidate state? the dakotas no we need two dakotas no we don't i don't think we need one to be honest with you no we need two dakotas wait why because they were there <laughs> protecting Yo, us from the Fargo canadians show coming up yeah 100 <laughs> percent. we need it two to go with this yeah and what you if ain't we doing trade a show one? in the South in South Dakota? I don't know which no. fucking one we're doing. What if we give her to Oregon? Fargo, North Dakota. Yeah, you ain't doing South Dakota. Mount Rushmore's in South Dakota. Make that Dakota, bro. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. What about Virginia? We South need two of those. Dakota people be, better be going no, to the I'm North actually Dakota on your show. side. I used to kind of do a joke about that. I am. Yeah, I have one too. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, fuck. I just wanted to disagree with you, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would create more tension and more fun. But um, but yeah, but no, no, I, I, it needs to be even. I care about how the flag looks. <laughs> so if they do it, they do have to remove. They have, yeah, state. we consolidate. We get rid of West Virginia. Put that. That's a suburb. Yeah, let's go. Oh uh, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Actually, it's a no, lot. Uh, we don't. Yeah, no, I think it's just too much work for Puerto Rico to become a state. Yeah, like getting rid of a state would be too much. Like all those jobs and the senators yeah. and fucking whatever. What are they called? House of Representatives. Everybody be bitching and shit. Mm. So I don't know if we'd be able to make it happen. But yeah, Puerto Rico, no chance. All right, that's fair. Yeah. Interesting cricket match from over the weekend. Oh, yeah, you little bitch. <laughs> India, <laughs> India beats Scotland by eight wickets. You little pussy. Damn, oh, eight yeah. wickets. Y'all got to put it on you, bro. Dude, imagine we played Pakistan, how much they would have beat us by. Son. <laughs> Dude, imagine what Pakistan would have been. Because we only got lost, we only lost to y'all in your stupid sport by eight wickets. That's a lot. And also, it's probably not even Scottish people. It's just Indians who moved to Scotland that That's are playing. That's a lot. Like, Scotch, we don't play can, cricket. Can, uh, what, do you play? what do you play? So it's Indian B team. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, do you, what are you good at? What, Scotland? Yeah, sports. Name war. a sport you're good at. <laughs> are you though? War. Are you, are you though? 100%. Which war? Inventing things. Oh, really? What did you invent? Inventing. What'd you invent? We didn't invent zero. That's yeah. for sure. What'd you invent? Uh, golf. Surgery. Oh, golf. Oh, wow. We invented Wow. The non sports. The, the, bike, like that? the bicycle. The thing that you want to have be on a good no, show. Oh, the thing that's dead? The you thing that, that you thing? always say is dead? What are you going to watch it on? Your good show. Son, Your my phone? big ass computer monitor, bro. That's what you watch things on? Yeah. I thought you were successful. No. <laughs> you don't have a flat screen? Yeah, I got a flat screen. That's just a big ass computer monitor these days. Y'all made some big ass <laughs> box, son. We said, hey, Indians <laughs> said, hey, let's make that smaller. Let's make that thinner. Oh, you copping out, bro. Let's make that thinner. You copping out, bro. What you well, talking Scott about? Scott made it. Um, what else? Probably tons of other things. Probably the bicycle. Tons of other things. Bicycle is one. The bicycle first. Alexander Graham Bell. Scottish. Scottish. Do you know what I mean? Alexander Hamilton's pops who left him. Scottish. The Highland Games. The Highland Games. You talking about? Wait, you taking credit for the pops who left him? Yeah. Put Come the on. battery in his back. Come on, bro. Logarithms. <laughs> Come on. Oh, logarithms. Yeah, I bet if Alexander Hamilton's dad stuck around, he wouldn't got shot up like some bitch by Burr. Probably would have won that duel. Oh, if his dad stuck if around. If his dad stuck around, Maybe. Scottish punk. Maybe. Maybe. Walked Maybe. off. Maybe. Like a walked little off. bitch. He did. Hey, wicked dog. Y'all got destroyed. Y'all got slaughtered. Son, we don't care about your sports. Son. The thing is, you lost in the one thing that you're supposed to be good at. You lost to Pakistan. <laughs> what have you ever Does it won crush you, you like... that he pronounces Pakistan so well, too? He no, no. Say Pakistan like the Green you Goblins lost, here. <laughs> but you did lose to Pakistan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happened. No, 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 no. Don't, happen. don't. It happens in sports. Don't skirt, skirt it over. It happens that. in sports. Yankees lose to the Red Sox sometimes. It happens. It Wait happens. America loses in basketball to Rwanda sometimes. It happens. never loses to Rwanda in basketball. Didn't they lose this Olympics to they lost Rwanda? Lost to Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah, very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very yeah, okay. different. Okay. America loses to Nigeria sometimes. It very happens. different. Okay. It happens. Here's the thing that happens. Uh -huh. 
You guys lost to Pakistan. Mm-hmm. That's your arch nemesis. Right. It okay. Happens. You put your best foot forward. It happens. I see how accepting you are of it. Yeah. And this is just what you have to do. To One out of 13. It. it happens. It, it's what you have to do to get through it. Here's the reality. You lost. So if it's you lose one you game in a series, did you lose the series? Is it a series? No, but it's double elimination, so we're not eliminated. Oh, but do you out. think you'll get a chance again? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I do you do. think will happen? I do. I think we're going to win. I you think? think? We'll be fine. It was you a bad think? day. Everybody has a bad day. It was a bad day. Bad day, dog. Okay. You want to put some money on it? Yeah. How much you want to put Bitcoin. on it? A Bitcoin. One full Bitcoin would let's be good. Let's put a full Bitcoin. You want to put one Bitcoin on <laughs> it? Yeah, let's put a full Bitcoin. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's put a full Bitcoin on it. One full Bitcoin? No. <laughs> pussy? <laughs> you pussy? Yo, believe in your people, All yo. Right. All right. Hold on. Do you believe in your people or not? <laughs> Yo, do you believe in your people or not, son? I believe in my people. Do you people. believe in it? It's only put one. Hand up, it's only one Bitcoin. I believe in my people. Dude, just put a Bitcoin It's only up. one. I feel bro. like you know something. Yo, yo, That's what I'm Put a Bitcoin up, up, I feel like I missed some news hey, or something. Hey, hey, hey. Put a Bitcoin up, right, bitch. Let's put a Bitcoin up. One Wait. Bitcoin up. One Bitcoin up. Shake on it. Next match. Wait. Next time they play, India wins. Next time they play. India wins. Are you going to shake on it? Next time they play. Let's go. Let's go. Next time India plays who? No, no. Next time India plays Pakistan. You guys are going to lose this tournament. You guys are gonna lose oh no! I'm putting a Bitcoin on a turn. You get the field you one pussy, Bitcoin, bro. You get you, you get the field for pussy, a, you get the field for I a tournament. I thought you believed in your country. Believe son. in your country, dog. Is it India, Pakistan, India, Scotland, or India wins the whole thing? I thought no, it was no. next India, Pakistan. Next India, Pakistan. But I'll bet a Bitcoin on that. Let's bet a Bitcoin. All right. I ain't betting no fucking Bitcoins. <laughs> You'd be goddamn crazy, son. You are crazy if you think I'm betting a Bitcoin. Son. I'm putting my money on these fucking Pakistanis. <laughs> you know, <a> goddamn <laughs> Oh, fuck. No, nah, I ain't betting no goddamn Bitcoin. Oh, I just started boy. to make money on Bitcoin. Guys, that's been an episode of Flagrant 2. I love y'all. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. And we will see you at uh, on Patreon this Friday. Flagrant 2. Patreon.com slash Flagrant 2. Join the asshole army. We will see you there. If not, we'll see you next Tuesday. Peace.